Hello. Back again. Right. Um, I want to go over the fashion watches. I want his name kept out there. I want his picture kept out there. So I'm in the UK, so there's not much I can do apart from do what I'm doing. If I was over there, I would be out searching with the father. I really would. But I'm not. So the only thing I can do is do what I'm doing. And let's just hope we get a really good out outcome and we do find this lad. But I'm just so disheartened by what from what I've been hearing the last couple of days from the stepfather and the mother. You know what I mean? So and we'll go through that when we watch some more Smiley's will live interview she had. Because when I showed it you the other night, I skipped the beginning part. Because I wanted to show you, listen to the part where they're talking about uh using a belt, right? And then there was other parts after that I wanted to listen to. So, hello everyone from Twitter. Oh God. Don't know if anyone's seen the news today, but in the UK, Princess, Wales, Princess of Wales has been diagnosed with cancer. That's two heads, two top people of the royal family from diagnosed with cancer. And I hope now, I just hope and pray that the press will leave her alone. Because Christ, she's just gone through a major surgery, which she's got to recover from, and that isn't easy. You can't just find something next day and go, oh, I'm going to go about and do my usual work. You can't do that with stomach surgery. You've got to let your body heal. Right? And now we've got this on top of that. And so if she's having chemotherapy, that's going to wipe her out. It's going to wipe her out. It'll weaken that. But if she eats the right food, which they can, because they, they're in that position where they can afford to do that. But there are certain foods you can eat, which, well, certain foods you shouldn't eat. They say you shouldn't eat cream cakes. I don't know why, but I do say that. Oh, I don't eat cream cakes. But I'm in my second year of being clear of cancer. Coming up to my second year, be two years in. October, I'll be clear. But I was lucky, I, I caught mine early, so that's why I'm not at work. That's why I don't work because the medication they put you on just sends your whole body all over the place because you don't know what you're doing from one day to the next. So it's, and I didn't even have to have chemotherapy. She's having to have chemo. I had radiation therapy, but not chemo. So it doesn't matter what what treatment you have for cancer. It really plays with your body. It really does. So let's just hope the press can get off her back now and let her let her and William and her family, because she's got a young family. Get on with their lives and do what they have to do. Get well, get strong, stay positive. Anyway, I mean, oh, who we've got in the comments? Let's have a look. Hi, MG. No worries. No worries, babe. Um, so, we've got that bit of sad news, but if she's strong and she's strong and she's positive, so she could come out of this really good. Right. Where's Charles, the king? 
he's got cancer, but they're not saying what cancer. I'm not saying which cancer it is for any of them. But then again, they don't have to. That's their private business. Right? But if he's having chemo, he's in his, what, 70s, 80s, 70s? It's, it will really play him up, wipe him out. Um, anyway, tonight we're talking about Sebastian Rogers. And I come across a video last night. Was it last night I come across it? Or this morning? I can't remember. Can't remember. Lack of sleep is loose to me. Nothing from my memory, I tell you that much. Anyway, so I come across this video by JRR Investigate. Don't know if you know him, if you like him, you don't like him. Right? Some people don't like him, but I like him. Yes, he's had a, uh, a he's got a past. Right? Well, but just put it that way, he has got a past. But he's, he's paid his dues. Right? And he's come out a better person. Right, so, and he does get the information you you want. He finds this information out. He boots on the ground. I was watching him live last night. I'll let him say, I watched him live last night. And he was outside where the works where Chris was going, he's working. I'm not joking. He's walking on the road and he turned, stopped. He said, there's a car up there that's been following me. Right? So he's turned around. To walk in the other way, he went, we'll walk around this way, right? And came out, it was security from the hospital that was across the road from where Chris was, work was supposed to be working, or was working, or was supposed to be working, right? He wasn't filming the hospital, he was filming where Chris worked, or worked. And they told him to stop the filming. They pulled up in the car and told him to stop the filming. He said, and he's going, I'm on a right, I'm on a pathway, public pathway. You can't, you can't tell me not to stop, to stop filming. You can't tell me that. Well, I'll phone the police. He said, phone the police because you're wasting their time. There's nothing they can do. I'm on public pathway. But you're filming the hospital. He said, I'm not filming the hospital. I'm filming this work here. Right, and he's very polite with them, but then he's walking around. And there's more cars turning up and watching him, more security cars, and it put him at. He was literally walking on the back streets of Memphis, right? And these were dark streets, and then like, people were just coming out from nowhere. You know what I mean? You'd, you'd be walking down the road, and then all of a sudden, like, out of nowhere, some guy just crossed the road. Where the hell did he come from? So he, he, because of them doing what they did, it pushed him away from where he was, right? Into an area which is a bit unsavory. You're on your phone videoing, but that's not going to stop someone jumping you. Yeah? So, so I'm not showing that one because that's just him talking about Chris, Chris's work. Now, it's a bit funny that he was filming there last night, and it was only the night before, and Chris said about he was now back at work, right? And I nearly lost his job there because of this lot, because of Sebastian, because of all this going on around Sebastian. And then the next night, JLR is there. <laughs> so... But we don't know if he's back there working or if he's got another job because we've heard some people are saying he's lost his job. Some people are saying, no, he's got his job, he's still got that job. Or, no, he's got a new job. And things, we don't know. Too many, if some, too many rumours going around. And to be honest with you, I don't care where he works. I really don't. I wouldn't want him to lose his job over this. I don't want anyone to lose the job. I want. The truth. 
And at the moment, the facts are, three weeks ago, Sebastian got up, walked out the house, no shoes on, no coat, no phone, and that was it. We never saw him again. Now, I'm, like I said last night, I'm sure Sebastian is going to leave the home for whatever reasons he had. Right? He will get took. A, his phone. Pardon <coughs> 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 me. A, his phone. B, his wallet and put his money in that is safe. Been saving up in his bedroom. He will get put his money in his wallet. Right? He can put shoes on as he's going out. He can put a coat on. You know what I mean? He hasn't took none of them. I was took his little flashlight. Bit of coincidence that that now comes out that he's took that after that video of the camera of those two subjects in the back area, that common area by their house comes out. Oh, that's that could be his flashlight. You know, them little keychain flashlights. They don't give off that much light. They really don't. It's just bright enough, really, to see where you're putting your keys. That's it. Or for reading a book under your bed covers or whatever. That type of thing. So, they're not that bright to walk along the street with. Plus, why would you be out there with no shoes on? That's the big question. That's the missing puzzle. From the moment he went to bed to 6 a.m. the next morning, there's a missing puzzle. This is a puzzle. Imagine you've got a Christmas, uh, Christmas, uh, a jigsaw puzzle. You've got all your edges in, right? And you just can't find that one. And you find, you always lose that one bit, don't you, of a puzzle, jigsaw puzzle. I can guarantee you there's always going to be a jigsaw puzzle with one piece missing. And this is the story one piece missing and the only people who know about that piece is his mother or his stepfather now i heard as well this is one of the questions i'd like to ask him i've reached down some questions to get right so if anyone else is alive i know what questions to ask one of the questions is oh, what was it now um do you have security cameras in your house? Not outside, in your house. If so, he knows what's going on. Because it's probably, if he has got them cameras, he's got them ones that you can hook up to your, an app on your phone. And he can watch what's going on in that house. You know what I mean? So, it's horrendous. And then I heard about, I only heard about this the other night because I was seeing it in the comments about a snake, something about a snake. I'm going, what the hell about a snake? Right? I know there was a picture of him with a snake wrapped around his arm and I'm thinking, when I saw that picture I thought, brave lad, brave lad. My son's got a snake, but well, it's not as big as that one. <laughs> if he had that snake, if he had a snake that big, there's no way he would get me in his house. There wouldn't be. No way. Right? So, and I kept thinking, such a brave lad to hold that snake. But you could see how happy he was. He loves that snake. But you'll find out later, when I'll do, show the video. Oh, what happened to that snake? Right? But the first one we're going to watch is the one where JLR meets up with the father and two of them the search party, two of the members of his search party. And, right, and they just talk here. But then you see him going around with them, filming them looking in places everywhere as the father said the other night on um who's what like was he the labs right josh i'm josh's the lab he said someone said 
uh, phoned up, uh, got in touch with him, saying they'd phoned the police in this state, some state or whatever, saying they thought they'd recognised a lad looking like Sebastian. Right? Right? Do you know the police had not even heard of this case in that state? People who live 15, 40 minutes away have not heard of this lad. Oh, my thing is coming. So right, I've ordered a take out. So, um, I'll have to jump up in a minute when it comes. So, anyway, so, um, there's lots of places I have not heard. Local states next to each other, next to where they live, have not heard about this. What's going on? Especially the police. Surely the police will get all amber alert. Or in danger, get alert, or everything like that. Or I'm not monitoring these amber alerts, you know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense when, especially the police don't know about these cases. So, it's alright, my bar was going, my job bar was going to go in a minute. So, you know, it's, I just can't fathom it. I don't know what anyone else thinks. Anyone on YouTube sitting in the hedges? As they say. What's your opinion? What do you think? Because I can't believe the police in other states don't know about this. It's all over YouTube. Well, I say all over YouTube. It's all over a certain section of YouTube. Right? So, I don't know. It's, I just feel so bad for the father. He's out there, boots on the ground. He's not at work at the moment. He's got, he took an absence of leave. This guy next to him is one of his colleagues. So he obviously comes out and says he's been when he's not working. It, I just can't believe. It's like they say, why look at this path? Why not? It could be anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. But I do believe that I can hold on. Hold on. Right, I'll be right back. I'll just go down to my door now.
Okay, I'm back. Right? It doesn't make any sense as to why other counties or other states have not heard about this case. So, we're going to watch this. So, if you get upset, get your tissues ready because I just so feel, feel so bad for this father. So, get ready. Oh, I'm just going to get out. Am I kidding me? Oh. My internet is playing up. Come on, internet. You're working, I know. I can see you flashing away there. Oh, stream yard. So it's dark out. And while we're waiting for that to load up, um, it's going off the screen again, I know. Now, looking absolutely everywhere, and not even a stone uncovered. And in this park, there's lots of houses, and I don't know if they're like summer left or places where people stay in the summer but, but it's just so many places a child could go and it just upsets me well right let me see if i can sort this out because this is taking too long Taking too long. Come on, mouse. Why is it not loading up? Stop there. All right. Is it loaded up there? No, it's still not loaded up, has it? It's... No, come on. Right. Let's try this one. For some reason, it's not loading up. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. Back out here? Do you plan to do more searches? I'm coming back tomorrow. I'm coming back Saturday. Until I've been through this whole park. And you got some volunteers with you. Uh, we have Mr. Jones and we have uh, Jaden. Talk to Jaden first. Jaden, what's Go going on? Just Go trying work. to find him. Just trying to find him. Member of the DCSO family. Thank you, brother. Mr. Oh, Jones, you guys work together? Yes, sir. What brings you out here? Um, I've been friends with him. We went through the academy together, and uh, I already, I've always told him that if he ever need anything, he can call me. And when this first started, when it first kicked off, um, he called me, and ever since this been going on, I've got his support. I got his back. Whatever he needs, whether it be me to go out and hand out Bellevue. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And I, I keep on doing it anytime you need me. You know, I'll be here. Go and get me somebody. Seth, how, how, what have you been going through each day since this happened? Day really hasn't ended. Today started. It really has started Sunday when I went to work. 
And when I got off of work, it just hasn't ended. There is no the next day. I get to that. And I just keep going. Is it somewhere? I gotta find you. You have an army of people, both in person and online, that are praying that Sebastian found a lot. I see it supporting you in trying to get I answers. I appreciate everybody. I really do. Keep your hands up, your eyes. Everybody. One person. Five people. Five people. Each two people. And we can get this from coast to coast. Keep his name out there. Keep his name out there. Keep his face out there. As long as we continue to look, there's always hope. Do you mm -hmm. see something? Don't question. Just call 911. Call 911. Call 1 800 TV I find. It doesn't matter if you're in California or if you're here in Tennessee, Florida, Ohio. It doesn't matter. He could be see anywhere. Something, say something. You want um more volunteers to come out and help? Or are they It'd willing? It would be wonderful. The more people, the faster we can cover this. Um, is there a way it can, people can hold of you in reference to communication about setting up searches or where to, if people want to know where to go, where can they go? Facebook page. And you're... That's your best route. Because I'm not on social media. I don't have any social media, but people on there reach out to me. The Facebook page, I would most likely directly get to Seth. If, and it's two exclamation marks, finding Sebastian Rogers, two exclamation marks. That's the easiest way to get information to Seth is through that Facebook page. Uh, where else do you uh, plan on searching? All the way to Jackson. Jackson, Tennessee? Yeah. Like in parks, side of the roads? Everywhere on the side of 40. I'm from anywhere. Seville to Memphis. We're going to keep searching. You know, when I left Clarksville and headed this way, I, I was searching all the way down here. Thank Everywhere you. I go. You know, you're on your way to work. Look for him. You might see him. Call in. Print out flyers. Put them to any restaurant, business, grocery store, anywhere you go. Ask if you can put up a flyer. Just need to keep his face out there. Hang yeah. out a flyer. To anybody that'll take it, everybody that'll take it. Keep handing them out until we find you. We are supporting you. Appreciate everything and praying for a resolution. Thank you for volunteers. Thank you. And uh I appreciate it for We we'll most let definitely do that on JLR Investigates. Appreciate it. I'm gonna show the viewers search, you know, what you've been doing throughout the day. Hope people can come out and help and make a difference. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.
in one way, I hope they find him. I really do. And I hope they find him alive. But if not, I hope they I hope his father doesn't find him if he's not alive. Because pardon me. If anything has happened to Sebastian, it's gonna kill him anyway. It'll break him. Because that's his only child. Right? But if he finds him as well, he'll never, ever get that out of his head. Never. But this is just some of the places they're looking. I'm in this park. He's got a loud voice, hasn't he? MG, you know, since looking at this case, since this case started, the first week I was okay with my sleeping, fine. But then the second week onwards, and now it's getting to like three hours sleep, if that. And sometimes it's three hours sleep in two days. Like the other day, I, I had three hours sleep, and then was going all day and I was doing my housework, doing this lot on here, doing some other stuff. And when it was time for me to go to bed, I wasn't sleeping. So I was still awake. So I've literally got nearly 48 hours on three hours sleep because of this. Because I can't sleep. Because when I do, I'm just it's just these thoughts keep coming up in my head. Thank you. Yes. You know uh, who was that woman? I I watched a YouTube thing the other night. She was talking about the interviews and about the parent, the step parent, stepfather and mother. I said they need to stop doing these interviews because it's not helping them one bit. And I thought, yeah, stop doing the interviews. Then perhaps everyone will start getting back to looking for Sebastian. You know what I mean? Because at the moment, everyone's concentrating on um, CP. You know what I mean? And he's enjoying this attention. He's enjoying all this attention. So I say, stop, do, stop giving him the attention. Right? They don't want to answer my our questions, then fine. They don't have to answer our questions. But let's just get back to thinking about Chris, uh, Sebastian. Because he's the one who needs our help, not the stepmother, uh, stepfather, not the mother. The father needs our help to get the name out there. But at the moment, all we're getting out there is CPs, because that's all anyone's talking about. So, 
Ale nie mam się Even if I have the good following, I still won't have a mama show. I feel like Jay Allah he said in his live last night, he said, I don't care. He said, I reached out to them. He even said to me, whatever I make from YouTube on that night, I will donate. You know what I mean? He said that live. He said, I'll donate it. You tell me what you want it to donate to, I'll donate to that. But I was watching Justin this morning, right? Because he had one last night, right? And as I said, I can't watch. There's too many videos, too many lives out there. No, too many. I can't keep up with them all. Right, but I will. I will catch up with them. So I've seen it being promoted by the YouTube the channel, but I didn't watch it. I thought, no, no, can't do it. Anyway, so, and I don't want this case to be like somewhere else, right? Because it's somewhere else has caused so much drama that case had between YouTubers, it's unbelievable. Now I've decided I will do a live on some of well, have no, And if anyone comes in my chat with drama, I'm they're getting kicked out because I will not have drama. No, not on my not on my live. If I want to cause drama, go on your own page and do it. I can't have drama on my page. But I'm just going to stick to the facts with the summer hours. And this is what I'm trying to do with Sebastian, stick to the facts. And we don't know that much, really. To be honest with you, we don't know much. All we know is he left that house sometime after 12 o'clock. Or it may have been before 12. We don't know because she heard him run. She heard like a, uh, him moving about or whatever, about 10 o'clock and all. So we don't know, perhaps somebody's doing something there. Right, but if he did leave, then he left any time, say from 10 o'clock at night. Because I've been the last day to movement or whatever you do, according to the mother. And 6 a.m. in the morning, when she got to wake him up, and he wasn't there. So really, the time is now lengthened as well. Because before she was going from 12 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning. Right? But now, because she said, oh, she heard him moving around or something about 10 o'clock and shouted to him, you, you need to calm down or settle down and get to sleep. Right? About 10 o'clock. So that adds another two hours onto the timeline. So, but I don't want YouTubers taking sides because this is what's going to happen and you know who's going to cause this? The stepfather. Because he'll talk to women, but he won't talk to men. Yeah, we all know why that is, don't we? Because he thinks he can control women. Can't control me, mate. No, not even my husband could control me. God, he used to let, if there's an argument going on, or I was having an argument with someone, let's say, aren't you going to stop this? He'd go, nope, I'm not getting into that. I'm not stopping her. Let her go. Because he knew if he tried to stop me from having this argument, I'd turn around and he'd be, in, he'd be right in the shit house. You know what I mean? Leave me alone. Just let me do what I want to do. Piss it off. So, no, he never, he, 
He will never stop me from doing it. He couldn't. He will no one could stop me from doing what I wanted to do. Anyway. I'm not gonna watch all of these because it is just a search, okay? So I'm gonna quickly move on a bit because you've got like 43 minutes of this. Right, so we just see what I mean by the houses. But here. Right. Let's stop there. And I think they speak to someone here. See, a lot of these could be a large holiday homes, couldn't they? Or home people who own them just let them out for the summer. I've got my shout Sebastian. I've got my headphones on and it's so loud. So pretty loud. Um, this, I think it's after this bit that gets somewhere else but I actually talking to someone. Might be here. So what they're doing is they're going from these old abandons, uh, abandoned and, and, and old buildings. Some of them are locked. They're just checking, just checking the crawl space. They're just looking around for any uh, where to find Sebastian. That's Sebastian's father. There's Seth, biological father. He's also talking to people in the area. Why you know, sometimes handing out flyers to certain people. I've seen him do it up at the McDonald's near here uh bringing awareness this is what a father is doing to try to find answers for what happened to his son 15 year old son. Right. Yeah. This is the father who's out there, being out there every day from day one, right? He's got blisters, bad blisters on his feet from walking. He's not sleeping. He's not eating properly. And he's doing these lives to get Sebastian's name out there. So all these lives that he does, it's cutting into his time where he could be resting, getting something to eat. But what is Katie and that piece of shit doing? Oh, yeah. They go around and hang, they might hang some back, uh, poster, a uh, leaflet side when they go to a bike show. Yes, I know bikers go long distances and they are for the children, the bikers are. 
Right? So, but you don't see them out and about like we, like you do, Seth. Oh my God. They can't even go to their vigils because apparently the one they couldn't go to was for security reasons. And I heard last night it's because some death threats. You don't want your dead, you just want the truth. Well, before you do die, can you tell us the truth? You know what I mean? Well, uh, and the other thing is, say hello last night on his live when he's out by his work, right? He's walking the streets and the back streets, right? He said, Oh, 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 he said, I've got some, and I can tell you this. He said, I've got some news, and I can tell you this. Uh, I'm thinking, Oh, yeah, what is he? Apparently, the inmates at is it Tennessee prison? Oh, no, not Tennessee, um, Nashville. Well, they're waiting for them to open arms. But he said he will not even speak to me now, even if you come back to him and said, look, I'll do a chat with you. He won't have him on his side, on his slides, he won't. He has seen enough lives with that guy on you to know that everything coming out of his mouth is beer. So, we'll continue a bit more. I'll just drop them off. You know, I like to, see, I love to hear Seth laugh. That's why I liked it the other night when he come on to Josh's on the lab. It just made him laugh. You know what I mean? So it was nice to see him a bit more chilled out. Even though he's on a chat alive, he was chilled out, he was chilling out. But he really needs to start getting more sleep, this guy does. So, if anyone can help, if anyone's watching this and they can help, go to that page. I'll put the link in the description. In case you forget what it is, it'll be in the description. Smash is more important than whatever the hell they were advertising. Yep. I agree with you there, mate.
be honest with you, I think something I can see called off the search complete, like, like we did, too early. The, they said they're scaling back, right? Yeah, but scale back, but keep people on the ground, keep people out there walk, searching these areas. Because by scaling back, all they're doing is they're sitting in this van or wherever they're sitting. And if they get uh, some information, which they feel is credible information, they'll go and check it out. So they could be sitting there all day doing nothing. When they could be out there with Seth looking. You know what I mean? I don't think they should have called the search off completely. The could said, well, we don't need all... Like, I don't know how many they had. Say they had 150, right? They said, the cookie said, I will just take, leave 75 out on the ground doing the search. The other 75 can go wherever they need to go. But I don't think they should have called off that search so soon. And the only reason they would do that is if they had credible information to make it look like, the, to for them to believe that something has gone on. So much happened for them to start the investigation. I think they just started it too soon. So, right, let's just jog on a bit more of this because uh, there was a, I think it's around here somewhere because I hear him talking to someone and that thing, I had to stop. Yes, no. You know, I can back my truck right up there if you need to. It's locked. Yeah, I can back it. Yeah, but when you look at this window, the glass is broke. But it just looks like someone's shot at it. It's like a bullet shot. See what I mean? It's like a bullet shot or a pellet gun or... Oh, God's sake! Oh, my Lord, that just pierced my ear. Christ's sake. Having a good look, you know what I mean? They're not just peering in and then walking away. They are having a really good look in this building. Now these properties, right, is it private land or is it on the park? I'm asking because it's got like gates up on a lot of them, they've got gates up. I can understand they one, it had horses, they normally kept horses there. So is it because they've got cat horses or something there that they've got the gates up? Right, so... And so I'll be pulling that cover off. That will be coming off the second boat. Uh, off the boat. I'm sorry. Smashing! I 
I'm sure my cat thinks every time he calls Sebastian, he thinks he's calling him. You know my cat's name, Toby. Shut up. Now they're dead. Oh. See this terrain around here in between Memphis and Hendersonville? A lot of rolling hills, trees, forests. Again, because that's where they need to get the people out right there in them buildings, in them woods. You know what I mean? All in this area. And it's a big area. Volunteers. They are out here. They're looking for Sebastian. Jail investigates He's out here in the field. Following along, but what I don't understand as well is your eyes open. the um, the money, right? Uh, what is it? The um, reward money, it's very low, right? It's like for Elijah Boo, nearly 40 thousand dollars, right? Something like forty thousand dollars. This is like three thousand dollars. That's not a lot, and I think they need to get that reward up higher. And I'll tell you now because I noticed when Elijah Bruce was like fifteen thousand dollars, right? No one was coming up. But then, when it went up to uh, twenty-five thousand, right? More searches come out, more people come out. They was coming out in their camper vans and parking up and looking around. You know what I mean? So the higher the reward money, the more people that will get out there looking, I think. Keep your eyes open for Sebastian. You know anything out there that could help authorities, contact TBI, some of the county sheriff's office, reach out. Is anyone else doing this as they're walking along, looking in the grass and the trees and everything behind him? Because I am. I'm not watching him, I'm looking behind him. Seth, Seth Rogers, Sebastian's father. Uh, he got some incredible information. He knows something that can help find Sebastian. Oh, now you've got my, uh, my mind going on MGF. <laughs> what, what happened last night? I can't remember.
What's, what live was they on last night? I can't remember if they was on the live last night. So they're even going in the Tennessee Department of Agriculture. He's not got the camera on facing them on the inside. She said that you can hear what they say. Uh, you're calling one. Cats. See anything down there? Why does it look weird? Huh? My eyes are everywhere, really. They're not even looking up them. I'm looking like the water and the tree edges and is it anything I can see? Not me. Anything sticking out that doesn't seem right. I've only got my earpiece, my ear headphones over my one ear, because when you when you say that name, it's really loud. And this is what it should be about on YouTube. It should be about the parents. Well, should be back, Sebastian. Okay, we're going to keep on eye. We are leaving here next week and go to Frostville. I hope everybody is on the car. No, no, no. This car and one in the Frostville. Okay, okay. We're saying the one. One I've driving the back window of my car or something like that, you know what I mean? Sure. But if you haven't got children so in the side of the back seat. Did you said he was missing one hour and a half from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Where is this? Northwest Nash. Okay. Okay. We're going to keep an eye on it. You're welcome. So I have a bunch of you too. Come into the end now, it's time. Can you imagine the walking I've done in that day? And a lot of this has been edited out, you know what I mean? Started after half an hour. That. Now you can just imagine he's edited a lot out. Could you just imagine how far he's been walking in a day? I don't know how he's doing it. I really don't. It must be like a bit like Groundhog Day because at the beginning when he's talking to him, Seth said his day hasn't finished from when he found out on the Monday or Sunday. Monday, many fan guys, he's still there, he's still on that day. You know what I mean? It hasn't finished. So he's still on that Monday back three weeks ago. It must be like Groundhog Day. No, where that film, where you wake up and it's the same thing again and again. I feel so bad for him. I really do. It just makes me sick because two people know something and they're not talking. They know something. Right, now we're going to go over to good old Smiley's. Right. And, um... Um, what am I doing? YouTube. Oh, yes. That's my day. Let me see. She's there. Right. But we're going to watch it. From, not all of it again. Right? Because it's three hours Wrong. We don't want to know how much crap you're getting. We want to know about Sebastian. And right, this is at the end. This is where I finished with it the other day. And because I missed the beginning, I, I skipped the beginning. And I seen her because there was some important information on that beginning bit. And it was only when I was watching JLR on his live, how he said he spent the first half hour going on about me, instead of his stepson, if he's going on about me, I thought, oh, Diana, oh, 
So I went back and I've been watching it this morning. Didn't watch it last night. Too tired. All right, so I was watching it this morning. Well, I should say this afternoon by the time I woke up and everything. And um, I thought, oh my God, I missed all this. So we're going to watch this. And let's put it upon this. And no, didn't. Was he on there? Don't tell me he was on there. I seen the lab the other night when he was on there, when he come up on the chat the other night. I fell asleep on the sofa, you see. <laughs> I woke up about four o'clock this morning, freezing cold, and just go up, got my PJs on and everything, and snuggled up in my bed. <laughs> I didn't get up to about 11 o'clock this morning. Anyway, so I'm going to have to watch that now, then, G. That's another video I've got to watch. Oh, my Lord. Oh. <laughs> God. Well, so we're going to watch the beginning of Smiley's. Hello, everybody. Okay, so... Um, hold on just a second. Well, never mind. <laughs> hold, hold on just a second. Oh, God, we got it. Oops. Everybody, welcome. Let me see your comments here. Okay. Um, I missed a call. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I don't want anybody to grab this link he's probably waiting chris i apologize i'll put the link in here and nobody's going to get on stage except for chris proudfoot um chris uh look in the audience and grab this link just give me one minute uh okay hold on a minute i'm not letting anybody else us because he, I was over on, and I, I'm sorry to say hello to everybody else. Hey, Katie. Um, um, okay, so I'll grab that link. I had to drop it in the chat because I'm sorry. I don't know how to um, send it to the phone or to the messenger. So there it is right there. Oh. Everybody in chat, I'm going to ask you to be um, polite. Just let me get through this, please. Um, and I Smiley, good job I wasn't in chat all night then, because I wasn't going to be polite. Because he makes me feel, ugh. Right? Yeah, someone just, who just message, sent me a message, put the message. I think Bio has get, step, need to just, I feel like Jag is going to the dark side, the more he's on, the more he talks about the drama, and not about Sebastian. Do you mean you think the bio dad and step dad or the bio mom and step dad? I think the, the step dad and bio mother and the mother needs to shush. Because the, the, the dad said he's out there, he's out there, boots on the ground. And I'm glad JLR was with him today, um, yesterday when he did this because it's showing people what. Seth is doing, do you know what I mean? But there's no videos where we can go up with, with the uh, stepfather or the mother and follow them round because they're not out there. So I don't even know if they're at the house because if the, if the stepdad is back at work, right, are they in the camper somewhere down by his works? I don't know. Because when he was doing this interview, he's like, he had that radio going. And he said he was at work. So was he down in Me uh, Memphis? 
was it was in the trailer and he's just watching he was just on the radio if anyone needs to go up he could sort it out sort of thing no oh, just move that in the way y yes yeah it i think the bio dad needs to just stick to but Well, like I was saying, MG, I'm not sure because I've heard he's got fired from the job, then I've heard he didn't get fired from the job, then I've heard he's got another job. I don't want anyone to lose a job. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want anyone to lose a job. But why would they fire him? You know what I mean? Does it make sense as to why they would fire him? But if I hear, if I see any other live when the bio dad's on and he starts talking about a way going off 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 the subject of Sebastian, I might put a comment in the chat and say, Don't worry about do not forget Sebastian. Don't go down that dark route. You know what I mean? I've put a comment up. Don't go down that dark side. Just down the path you're going. And talk about Sebastian, get his name out there. Don't worry about the other two. Don't drag don't let them drag him into their problems. Well TBI can search in your job site because of a war worker. Hmm. Yeah. But I don't know, apparently I heard it was he nearly lost his job he said he nearly lost his job over this but then he got sorted and now he's back at work because that, that's what he was doing the other night when he was on that live he was at, he had the radio that's what you could hear in the background don't know if it was at that same place or at a new job i don't know and to be honest with you and i don't care all i care about is sebastian and smiley if you're listening I wouldn't be nice to him. I wouldn't. Sorry. I can't be nice to people like him. I appreciate you all being here. Um, Chris told me he wanted to come on here, so... Um, okay. Yes, I also heard that he kept you waiting. I also heard that last night. It was in my chat. That he kept them waiting before he come up. So he's still getting control of everything, you know what I mean? So it's just sick. He's playing games, CP CP is he's playing games. And the more you the more you pamper to him, the more you talk with him, the more he loves it. Because he's in the attention. It's not, he's not talking about Sebastian, he's talking about him. And I don't like that. And I, I don't want the dra dad, the father, to be dragged into that. I want the father to stay on the path he's taking, which is looking for his son, which he's doing every day. But I also want him to do, if he does a lie, come on a lie, not to talk about any of that with his wife and his, the stepfather. Because at first he wouldn't say anything about him. He wasn't saying anything. But I think then again, he's probably getting a bit pissed off with the lies that they say. You know what I mean? He might be getting a bit pissed off. Because it, like the other night, the other day, the uh, stepfather said uh, how Sebastian was always saying he didn't want to go to his dad because he smokes. And he smokes in the house, apparently. Wow. The other night when he's on Josh, yes, he smokes. But he was outside smoking. He wasn't smoking inside. He would get his phone and he'd walk outside and have a cigarette outside. So if I coming out with things like that and, and I was a father and I was even that and I know for a fact that I went outside to smoke. 
right? Because I'm a smoker. You probably heard the light is going, right? But when my grandkids are here, I try and stick to the kitchen or my balcony. I try not to smoke around them. Sometimes I can come in the kitchen and I'm like, oh, God, you know. You know what I mean? Just go back in the living room, sort of thing. But it's a bit hard for me to smoke outside because I'm, an, I'm on the 14th floor of what they call in Scotland a multi. And I'm not going down 14 floors to go outside to have a cigarette. Sorry, it's not happening. Not happening, not when I've got two young kids with me. Right? And not when the one grandson is half, half naked half the time, he won't get dressed. So, anyway, he's probably had enough of their lives, MG, and, and, G, and that's why he's probably talking about it more than that. Okay. All right. Can you just show me your face? You can cover it back up if you will. If it's, if, I mean, I know it's really you, but because you called, but if you can, you just show me your face and then you can put your screen back down if you want to before you go up. It says, oh, the device is not connected. That's what it's showing. Device is not connected. It might take a minute because the device is not connected. All right, I, I sent another link. I don't know if they have to go out and come back in or what, but the device is not not connected it's not showing connected okay are you there now can you show me your face oh there you are thank you okay i see katie hold on hi hello okay um i'm i'm kind of surprised but um thank you and welcome for coming up here i appreciate that um how are you how are you feeling today Pretty terrible, to be honest with you, 24 days in, and there's a bunch of horrible things being said and a bunch of misinformation being spread, and my son is still missing, and so it's it's horrible. There's not a better word for it, to be honest with you. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm glad you come up here, and I will. Um, I ask my chat to please be respectful, and I will let you say what you feel, and, you know, again... And I wasn't expecting this, but you're more than welcome to say what you feel. And if it's okay, you know, um, I, I would like to ask some questions. But Smiling. Why is it okay for them to say what the, how they feel? It's not okay for your members in your chat to say how they feel. Come on, Smiley. Oh, my God. But uh, I would like to talk about Sebastian and, um, you know, maybe we could just start there. Would that be okay? Yeah, I think Chris is still trying to join as well. Okay. I didn't know if he was. Yeah, I didn't know. A lot of people are accusatory when we speak. It's, oh, it's a lie. Oh, it's not us. And. Yeah, well, the truth is, is no matter what any of y'all think, I didn't do anything to my son. My husband didn't do anything to my son. We love him dearly and we are doing everything that we can to try and find him and bring him home. And his father loves him dearly as well. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, we know his father loves him dearly. I mean, we know his father's out there boots on the ground, but you're not boots on the ground. I I, you know, there's a lot of questions that people have and a lot of what ifs. And, you know, I know sometimes it's it's tough. I mean, I've seen a lot of cases like this and I know 
I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Let me say that. I would not want to be in your shoes. I don't want um, anybody to have to be in my shoes, to be honest with you. It's nothing any parent should ever have to go through. Right. Right. Um, you know, I've... <laughs> I've, I've seen in my own family, um, you know, I've actually had a runaway and I ended up murder and I know it's not the same. It's not my child. Um, although I have lost a child and this is not about me. It's about Sebastian, but I will tell you, nobody should have to sit in your shoes. There's not words that I can say. Um, but also I, do have an autistic son, and I know many do. I didn't know that friend was calling. I'm dropping it again. I think she's having a bad signal. I don't know where she's at. She may be where she can't get the signal good. Here she is back. Okay, Katie. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> and you may have a bad signal somewhere. I don't know if you're having like rain or anything, but it keeps going in and out, but that's okay. Um, but anyway, it, you know, the main thing is people just have a lot of questions and just trying to make sense of everything. And uh, you're here. Okay, Chris, um, I'm dropping the link again. I told nobody not to get it, but you. Here you go, sir. Oh, drop again. Sorry. There you go. Uh, if you'll just click on that. But I do, you know, it, uh, still with anything that we personally go through, there's nothing. It's not the same. And I understand that. And so I am very sorry. I'm very sorry for, for you all, all three of you. I can feel, I can feel when his dad talks, Seth, I can feel that pain and and you know it's just different i'm not trying again to accuse like i said anybody i'm just trying to make sense of everything and that's all i can say i just i can't be fake i have to be honest you know so well, it's your opinion and you're entitled to it obviously but I can tell you that the pain that his father and I and even my husband are feeling right now is immeasurable, to be honest with you. And I have never in my life would I have ever dreamed that this would be a reality. Yes, ma'am. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody ever thinks this will happen to them. Hey, Chris. Hey. Um, yeah, you, you surprised me calling me, <laughs> you surprised me calling me, but I'm glad I could bring you on and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, talk about this. A lot of people's just interested. I know it's irritating and, um, I, I just, I, I know it's irritating, uh, me included. I know I am too, but we're just all there's no, we all have opinions and there's no stone we can leave unturned. We have to think outside the box. And I know it's irritating to y'all. I know it's irritating to everybody, but we all want Sebastian found. And, um, you know, I just told Katie, you know, we just have to go with, we all have our opinions and they may not always be good, but, you know, my heart's in the right place, but go ahead and um, I'll let you start or whatever you want to do. So, there's Tom too. Um, give me a favor. I got to drop out. I got to make a phone call real quick, and I will be back. This is my okay. call. I don't okay. Care. I don't. I don't miss this phone call because it's my daughter. No, you go ahead. Come go back ahead. and hang tight. Give me about five, ten minutes. I'll be right back. You're fine. You're fine. We'll be here. Uh, I'm just going to skip up to bed. Chris comes back on again. Oh, God. So, back are on. you asking me that, or is one of your, your 
No, I just, I, I'm asking you that. I just wondered. Okay. Like, if you, I, I was just wondering, like, if you, like, are you, um, in fact, let me just, I'll turn my chat off for just a minute so I don't get pre- No, 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 don't, no, no, don't turn your chat off. Leave it on. It's fine. Okay. That, no, way, that way you can get all these questions coming in because, like I said, I told you, I gave you my word. I come on your show. I would answer questions. People ask the questions, but keep in mind, like I told y'all from the very beginning, I'm brash, I'm direct, but I'm respectful. And I ask for the same in everybody else. What's the clapping for? Is it like I'm brash, I'm respectful? Is he doing that sort of thing, clapping his hands in front of me? Grow up. That's annoying. Yeah, and I, I told them a while ago, just please be respectful because I wasn't expecting this. It's like, please be respectful, y'all. Because so, so one one thing right now, I'm gonna tell you right now, really irks me with some of these folks that want to follow these YouTube, and I'm I'm very honest about this. Somebody says I won't talk to men. I, Not I, that I don't want to talk. Right. It's not that I don't want to talk to men. I have talked to more law enforcement men agencies in the past 24 days than I've probably ever. Then you have to talk to them because if you don't, then it's going to look suspicious, isn't it, Chris Proudfoot? Talk to my entire life. Same thing goes for women. So, no, I don't have a problem talking to a man or talking to a woman. I appreciate everybody's assumptions or concerns innuendos whatever they want to be but at the same time i vet who i talk to i'm not just going to open up and talk to anybody um and i will put this out there jlr everybody wants me to talk to this guy explain to me smiling you will probably have a better understanding of this explain to me why i should talk to jlr um I just really wish you would because he does because he does go out everywhere and he he wants the truth. I mean, and he may not get the truth out of you, but I have seen him literally. Oh, he get the truth out of him, Smiley. He get the truth out of him, even if he didn't tell the truth. He he reads between the lines what people say. He's good at that. You know what I mean? He's good at reading between lines. And he'd pick, he'd pick up on them. <coughs> <coughs> so you're not necessarily going to hear the words about the truth coming out of his mouth. You know what I mean? So he probably find it. Go in places deep, like scary places, and like really just try to get the truth and try to like follow people that's just taking him in the woods or whatever. I swear to God, this internet is doing my head in. Show him places, whatever, that he didn't know from Adam. He goes from one place to another. He may be on a plane to Mexico. Next time he might be in California, whatever. And, you know, I mean, he's grown a lot. I just think a lot of people don't give him a chance. That's just my honest opinion. Right. Saying, Do you know why people don't want to give this man a chance? Well, go ahead and tell me. I mean, I want your opinion. So I'm going to tell you my personal opinion. Okay. Okay. This is my my personal opinion. This is nobody else's, not my wife's, not anybody else's, my personal opinion. Okay. So I did my, I did my due diligence and I read up on Jonathan Lee Rich. Mm -hmm. Rich is, excuse me. I, I've read up on it. Not necessarily the best character in the world. When you start reading and the first thing comes up, uh, everything that you can find on this individual. Now, I don't know him, Adam, from Eve. I really don't. He don't know me, Adam, from Eve. But when he opens his mouth and goes out there and starts spreading lies, and yes, lies, because in Unless you got hardcore evidence that I'm an abusive husband, abusive father, I've got a, a restraining order against me. Unless you got proof, don't open your mouth because it's real simple. 
I don't have any of that. Good luck finding it. I've never lied to y'all. I've been open and honest. People don't like my answers. So people want to come back with their own assumptions. And I'm so, so sorry that I can't open up and give you every little piece of evidence and every little detail that we know. I am terribly sorry. It sucks because when it does and it can't come out, my only question to everybody else is, when are you going to start issuing public apologies? That's, <laughs> that's not to you. That is to everybody that wants to come out and badmouth people that don't understand and don't have a clue what's going on. Never. And I think that's pretty fair. <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that. But let me let me ask you this. Um, yes, if um, mm -hmm. if somebody has over 100,000 people, why do you care what their past is or what they say if they can help you get Sebastian's name out? Um, so when you, when you and, and I'll be honest with you, I've heard some of yours. And the toxicity that comes out of what you guys projected about me has only toxified everybody else that puts in a lead or says, well, check out the stepfather. Do this. Do that. Call law enforcement. Check this out. Do this. You take a body. Every time something gets reported, a body comes away from the investigation to vet because they are required to do so. And it sucks because the same answers are the same across the board. Why they won't come out and tell in the public eye, hey, all three parents have been completely vetted. All three parents have been, you know, questioned. All of this. Why they won't come out and say it? I understand to a point. I do. Well. Yeah. All three, as he likes to use that word, vetted, right? Um, what was I going to say now? God, I'm just going out of my head, right? Oh, yeah, vetted. You and KT apparently have had the polygraph, polygraph, what it's called. But Seth, who asked them to give him one, they said no to. Tell me that. Why did they say no to Chris, uh, to Seth for a polygraph? They didn't want him to take one, but they wanted you and Katie to take one. Why? Because you, well, Katie was the last to see him, right? And you were married to Katie, and you were known to be living in that house with Sebastian. Even though you hadn't been there for like nearly two weeks or three weeks because you've been down in Memphis, right? You was still in contact with them, you're still phoning them, you're still talking to both Katie and Sebastian. So, yes, they need you to give a uh, to go there, right? And acting up, coming out and saying you've been cleared. No, they haven't come out and said that. And until they do, Tough look, you're not cleared. But it sucks at the same time because it's extremely hurtful that, that we, me, my wife, and Seth have to live in this life, even when this is over, however it ends. We have to live this life. Not if you lock up, hopefully. Perhaps then we won't have to keep listening to you babbling on, right? Instead of looking, saying, talking about Sebastian, right? This has been going on now. You could say 19 minutes. Say 18 because of the connection and all that long. For the last 18 minutes or so, you have done nothing but babble on about JLR and how bad you, how bad it looks on you. That's 18 minutes or no, 15 minutes or so where you could have been talking about Sebastian but you haven't 15 minutes you won't get back 15 minutes of your life of Sebastian's life you won't get back because 
That count. That means it's a count. You need to spice it up. Not everybody else. Quite frankly, Sebastian's going to find out what everybody's been saying about his parents, and I can't even imagine how distraught he's going to be, but we have to find him. I mean, yeah. and it sucks. Yeah, you have. Yes, we do have to find him, and if he's alive, which I hope and pray God to he is, right? He will not be giving back to you straight away because I need to know why he left in the first place. What made him leave? Because there's things that have come out in this life, which we heard the other day, right on in this life, that my jaw was hitting the floor. I was dragging my jaw, jaw along the floor when I got up because I could not believe what I was hearing. That he used the bow tongue. How um, he talk, talks about this in a minute, in a few minutes, but. This is the perfect way to make sure your child cleans the room. You'll ne do this and you'll they'll never have a messy room again. Right? Now, I used to threaten my kids with the bean bag, yeah? And I go, right, that's it. After like three days of asking them to clean the bedroom up, right? Now, all I asked them to do was clean the bedroom. They didn't have to do any other chores just to keep the bedroom clean. They didn't have to wash, they didn't have to cook, they didn't have to clean the house, they didn't have to put the rubbish out, they didn't have to do anything else, right? Because that was just me. I just, uh, that was how I was brought up. Just keep your bedroom tidy, put your washing away, and we were allowed to go out and about and do what we wanted, right? And that's how I brought my kids up. But if after three days of me asking them, say, can you go and clean your room up? Have you done your room yet? And they had him. I'll say, if it isn't done by tomorrow, I'm coming up with a black bag. So I'll give them one final warning. And I swear to God, as soon as they heard me coming up them stairs and I'm going, you know, you shake the bags to open them, to get the, get them open, they'd hear that. And I swear to God, they had everything cleaned up. Because what it was, I would say, anything on that floor, I am going to bin, right? Be clothes, toys, apart from your shoes, Right, because they've got to be on the floor. The clothes or sh cl uh, toys, they're going in the bin. Right? So what my kids would do, they'd quickly pick everything up off the floor, put it on the bed. Right? And I go, oh, so there's nothing on the floor now. Yeah. Well, being as it's on your bed now, being as you've got off your bed to pick it all up, you can now stand there and put it all away. I'll be back up in 15 minutes to see how you're getting on. And they'll put it all away because... They knew that if they, when they went to bed, they'd have to put it back on the floor again otherwise. And they knew if I was seeing it on the floor again, they had the last warning that it was going in the black bin, in the bin. But this guy, you'll hear it on here, actually would go up into his room and put all his, everything of his that was out of place, that wasn't put away in this black bag, and then get Sebastian to carry that black bag down to the bin area, down to the bins. Now, a child is autistic. They like their crafts and they like to build things and they like to draw and paint and black lot, right? They like all that sort of thing. So to throw all that away because it's on the floor. I if I got if I can have an autistic son, right? I would not have done that. I would just go, oh, come on, come and help me clean it up. Because that's what my daughter-in-law does. She says to her, her son, well, I'm coming and going in your room. Look at it. All your toys are everywhere. Let's help me clean it up. And you know it does. Right? And then sometimes she'll sort out the toys. And there's a lot of toys that are missing bits or got broken heads or whatever. And um, she'll go, right, shall we sort your toys out from good toys to broken? Right? And he'll actually go in and sort all the broken toys out and put them in a black bag to go out to be. And then he'll sort out any clothes that are too small for him to go to his charity shop and things like that. So you don't have to be as harsh as he is. You don't. Have to find him. 
And that's the most important thing. Yes. All the rest is going to fall into place later. But the most important thing is he, he has to be found and he has to be found regardless. Period. I want right. to just side note. He's not clapping y'all. He's not what? People keep saying that he's clapping. He's not clapping. That's just background noise. No, no he's I don't clapping. Yeah, y'all. Some people have heard they're clapping, and that's fine. I'm, it's I guess clapping. I'm currently working. Yeah, y'all. Now, where, where, understand, people, where I work is really nobody's business. Oh, okay. um, I, and I would hope you would respect that because I'm not this criminal. I'm not this monster that everybody wants to believe. Oh, you are. But I do believe in respect and respect and it goes both ways yeah i don't feel anybody should be going to anybody's job or anything like that no i don't i don't feel anything like that uh, but as far as jr i mean you know that's up to you who you speak with or anything like that i do appreciate you holding up to your bargain speaking to to me um some of the hard questions you know i know to do with you but i'm saying i'm just saying you know as far as all that that has nothing to do with with you it it it's just a matter of how i put it to every every case that i care about um just in said a good point today right he said no one this cp piece of S goes on about JLR and how he won't do an interview with him because he don't want him making money, right, off, of, off Sebastian, right? Uh, Justin turned around and said, uh, hold on, hold on, are you going to tell all these news reporters uh, when you show these, any clips of Sebastian, you can't monetize it? No, they're not going to do that. They make money off him. And that means everyone makes money somewhere. So you can't just you can't just turn around and say, "Well, I won't do an interview with you because you're going to make money off him." Right? All the YouTubers you've spoke to have made money off. Okay, the money, a lot of the money that went into the one, which I agree with, she was putting towards them big billboards. Brilliant idea, right? But you gotta tell all these news out newscast reporters as well. And these uh, YouTube news reporters that you can't monetize anything you talk about with Sebastian. You don't work like that. Sorry, it does not work like that. You know, and there's no reason to be angry about it. It's just something, whether it's me, you, or whoever, and that happens. To, look, I, I had a grandson that went missing for a couple of hours here not very long ago back last year, and I know how, how that feels. And, you know, we can sit and say, this happened, this one, this happened, this one, and this one don't know, and whatever. But, you know, I'm very passionate about these. I've been through a lot of tragedies that a lot of these people that are my subs don't know that I've been through, and a lot I have told them. Um, but, you know, I, I understand mine is not yours. I understand that, but I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate about Sebastian and I do have to ask these questions and they're questions you don't like and whether you're in here. No, it's, not. it's not that I, it's not that I don't like them. I don't want anybody to start thinking that there's not questions. I don't like, I I've told y'all from the very beginning. I welcome all, all of your questions. The only thing is because of the ongoing investigation, there are certain things that we are not and have been told by law enforcement. Do not get into specifics because it could jeopardize the investigation. People don't like that. And I am sorry. Um, I And I'm speaking for myself. I'm not going to speak for my wife. I'm not going to speak for Sebastian's father, Seth. 
his mother, his sister, or anybody for that matter. Bob, Chris, your time's running out because if the grandmother sticks to her word, she's got to talk to the TBI or whoever next week if her grandson isn't back. She gave you a week to tell them or give them their grandson back. To give you a week. It's now Friday, Saturday. So you've got two more days, Chris. Probably three, really, because it's only beginning of the day there. Right? So say you've got three more days. And I hope to God the grandmother does talk to the TBI. Now, the TBI should be speaking to her. She's got answers. She's got questions. She's got answers. Right? And you are getting out there because you know what she's going to come out with. And that's why in this interview, you come out about the bout. You come out about throwing his toys out and all his belongings and things like that because he hasn't tidied his room up. Right? And all that. She knows all about that. And I hope to God she tells the TBI everything she knows about you. Because I'll tell you something else. Children who suffer with autism, or autism, or who are autistic, sorry, autism, autistic, right? Um, they really don't know how to lie. They can't lie. It's like my grandson now is being assessed, right? He'll say something and you look at him and then he'll go, I'm only joking. He knows he can't lie. He can't lie. And he'll tell you the truth. It's like if he does something, I'll go, what did you do? Nothing. What did you do? Right, you don't have to shout at him and scream at him. You just say, what did you do? Well, I was doing this and then this happened and this got... But I'm trying to put it back together for you, Gran. You know what I mean? And uh, it, so they can't lie. You only got to say, what did you do? And they will tell you. Because they, they know then that you know that you've done something. And they know they can't lie. They just can't do it. But, you know, I do welcome the hard questions. I do. Well, and I'm, and I'm okay with it. And for the record, I don't have a problem talking with JLR or anybody else. Now, yeah, if you're you one of these shows that are for profit, you want to talk, you go out and publicly announce it publicly that any money that you make on the show, as long as me and my wife are involved, that money gets directly posted to signs, flyers, or billboards. To help find our son, I'll do it. Are all you YouTubers listening to this? Uh, right. I've got some questions for you, Chris. One. When was the cement pulled up his works? Was it after Sebastian went missing or before he went missing? One. How come the story keeps changing? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Have you got house lights outside? If so, why were they not on? Next question. Have you got a security alarm on your house? If so, why wasn't that on? And this is the one question that really bothers me. Do you have cameras on the inside of your house? If so, why? Because I've heard that. And never one. Do you think it's okay to let child services put their fear of God into a child? Like you said she did. Right? Do you think it's okay to use a belt on a child? And why, as the mother, do you let any man discipline your child? That's only just a few of the questions I'd like to answer. But if it's for personal gain, it ain't happening. Yeah. I just went out today. I mean, I take money off my own stuff i just went out today and got a bunch of flyers and i suggested with i suggested with um 
because Seth wanted I heard him on another show. But anyway, I, I suggested same thing I did with Summer Wells. Every time you mail something out, get it in the mail, send it out with bills, send it to whoever you write to, do whatever. I'm very passionate about that. I'm very passionate about boots on the ground, going out, handing out the flowers. I don't care if they get thrown in the in the trash, whatever, five minutes later. They see the picture. They see the photo. As long as they see and say, hmm, and take a glance at it, there is a chance for me. They oh, to or something, say something. That's a good idea. But in today's society how many people actually write letters like all my bills are paid online right uh all my, i only send birthday cards out to my son and my daughter and their partners and my grandchildren christmas cards a lot of people now don't send christmas cards because they do it online Right? So, it may be different in the USA. It may be different where you do have to send your bill off and pay for it that way. I don't know. But not many people actually send cards or letters nowadays. They don't. I get more what we call, um, what's the name? Um, I get more leaflets than anything else because as i said all my bills are paid online bump paid straight off every week every day on the every week every month on this one day between the, the end of the month and the beginning of the month of the next month my bills are paid online so that wouldn't work in the uk because not many people send letters or cards nowadays to say, don't know what it's like in the other side, but in the UK. Whatever. And, you know, but nobody is going to dictate my money because let me tell you something. I've been in this for, you know, three years now, banging my head against the wall, being called everything, drug here, drug there, with this stupidity stuff, doing summer wells, and not ask for a penny and i figured well if you might can't beat them join them meaning first i did it to put my cash app up for a a point one day and then i took it back down and the next thing i'm just like no they're like you need to monetize i'm like you're right i'm going broke trying to just keep the word out or whatever like somebody just gave me ten dollars i spent that today in gas and going and getting flyers and doing whatever just on sebastian that's why i knew you just said that so right but that that you're not monetizing on you're utilizing right. it to do something to put it forward right but those people who want to pocket money on the other hand i'm not about pocket i'm, I'm not i'm not lying in your pockets right no and, 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 you know and that. i'm I get that. I'm, I'm gonna be very respectful because i don't want to say it like i would normally say it but Feel i tell free. everybody free. Well, no because if there's there are some folks that don't like cussing well okay. and and but understand something and i'm i'm gonna i'm respectful about it because i'm being darn it i just realized i can't cuss on here because i won't get my video put out but i'm the one who loves i'm the one who will know me if i was talking to someone now face to face it would be f this f that f whatever i dropped the f bomb in every sentence I say, literally. So I'm being very good on here, but I'm not dropping that F bomb. No. On my personal Facebook page, I've got how I look, how I drop the F bomb. Because some people don't like the F bomb. If you don't like the F bomb being dropped, then don't come and watch, don't join me on my personal page. Don't. Because believe me, I put statuses at one and F this and F that. And I think I swore more times in that one paragraph than I had in a whole week. Right? Because I was so angry. So 
on here, I don't drop the F bomb. I'm very good. Occasionally, I'm I'm positive I'll do. Positive here. But if you don't feed me, finance me, or sleep with me, you oh, know. God. Oh, God, no, I wouldn't want to sit on that. Oh, God, no, you just put, oh. And Jay, you just put that whole book of thought in my head. Sleep with him. Oh, God. Where's my bookie? Oh, God. I don't, I don't owe anything to anybody at that point. Well, you know? I think, I think we kind of think <laughs> a little there, you know? And See? I don't, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree there, you know? And that brings me to say, hey, you shouldn't, you should not care what people think. And you, but JLR back to him again. And I hate to keep bringing him up because you're on here and I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. And I want well, to, that's you, funny. not JLR, but what I want to say is one other thing you have to take in consideration him going to all these places, not just to help Sebastian, but all these other people. That's not free. You've got to remember that. That's not free. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Right, but if, if I'm if I'm on his show, we're talking about my son's case. Mm -hmm. I understand. That's excuse me. Excuse me. Your son? No. Your stepson. Your stepson. Seth is the father. It is Seth's son. Not your son. You're just a stepfather piece of s that i grab my shit wipe off my shoe as i walked in my door uh there there is a situation of my son not everybody else's you know and i know he's doing his thing and i appreciate it what i don't appreciate is some of the stuff he does put out there that he apps when i've asked the guy i said do you have proof do you have physical evidence that i am anything what you say right and he doesn't so then he keep doesn't. my name out of your mouth right it's real simple and then you don't want him like if he does this because he's there now so you don't want him and i don't know i'm not going to talk to him on the phone or anything i don't do that but like um i just like I what he does but so i'm just asking because he'll hear this so are are you so and you don't want him to uh monetize on that what you're he's talking about your son correct yeah, if he's going to monetize, take that money, go buy flyers, go buy yard signs, put it on the billboards. Okay. Right? Oh, he was listening, or we heard about this. Because he said last night on his live that he will not have that guy, CP, um, talk to him now. He will not talk to him. He don't want nothing to do with Chris or Katie. Neither of them. All right. I mean, I and that's and that and that's fair. I'm asked he wants me on the show. That's fine. Then I want to I want a I want a public acknowledgement that you're gonna donate every dollar that you make off of my son's show. You stop saying your son, your stepson. It's not your son. Seth is the father. You're the stepfather. Please stop saying your son. The finding him. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. And I get that. I get that. Now, can I say one other thing? Because yes, before we kind of get started, <laughs> the only reason yes, the only reason is because I, fair is fair, and I, I, I yes. want to say this. Um, and I said I would treat you fair, and I will. I try to you treat everybody. Just thirty minutes talking about. How hard, hard done by he is. What about Sebastian? Buddy, I do try to hear your body now. The weather. Well, Gotta fast forward a little bit. Pretty hurt about that myself, and um, I didn't like that because you knew it was coming, but I didn't ever expect it was coming from somebody else. Oh, I'll give you miss that. I'll give you miss. Come on. that open for him he does not have to call me anything he does not want to except for late for dinner because that ain't happening right right okay even seth calls chris his dad his stepdad 
Right. So his mother All, has her opinions yeah. and that's that. You know, and unfortunately, I hate that family disputes. I'm, and, and I don't care if what it is. When something in your life becomes so publicized and it's so dramatic, people find a way to turn and find ways to just make it the worst thing even worse just because. And, and it sucks. It truly sucks. I personally think we should all be working together to find Sebastian because Sebastian. Oh, well, you know, that add them boots on ground, are you, Katie? Tell you what, why don't you get into your ex-husband? I'm sure he'll tell you where they're looking. And you and your partner or husband can meet him there one day and you can go and help on the search. Okay? Do that for once. You can. Sebastian is an awesome person who deserves to be home. Katie, let me ask you, the night, uh, Sunday night, um, when you said there was a noise, what type of noise do you think that was that you heard? I'm not honestly sure. It sounded like he was messing with stuff in his room, which was not uncommon. Which is why I said, hey, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you're supposed to go to sleep. Okay. So you didn't check on him at that time, but did you did you check on him at midnight? Did you flip the light on and look to see if he was in the bed at midnight when you got up to go to bed? No, um, and because I didn't have any reason to. You know, when he was little, I used to check on him all the time, but he's older now and he's 15 and Y'all can figure out why a mother may not want to necessarily pop into a teenage boy's room unexpectedly. Yeah. What about tapping on the door? You okay in there, Sebastian? If he's in there, he's going to be like, yeah, I'm fine. Just, right? Or just open the door slightly. Don't have to turn the light on. Just check if he's asleep, in, if he's in bed and asleep. You know what I mean? Because later on, where we'll get to, you go in his room then, don't you? Um, let's see. Well, when, uh, when uh, Seth said that uh, when he came, that everything was in pristine condition except for his room, like, I know that the Ellie was there, and he said that the Ellie was there. Well, I mean, what did he mean by that? Was that just like the bed was unmade or, you know, where you looked under things? Or was it like, what did, what did he mean by that? Sebastian, Sebastian's room is always a little bit messy, but um, um, even more so with all the people coming in, all the law enforcement coming in and looking through things, me looking through. Right. When you're looking for something for a, in a child's room, right, you look in the drawers, nothing in there, so you put it back in, you shut the drawer. Right? You might look under the mattress, see if there's anything under the mattress, any little notes he's put he's there. Anything that could tell you where he's gone. Right? But you put the mattress back again. Right? You might look in the wardrobe if there's any coats he might have slipped into his pockets or something. Right? But it's the fact that Seth turned around and said, everything was pristine, as usual, it's always tidy and clean, except that word, that one word got to me. And I knew then something wasn't right when he said except. The police, right? Well, when the police come and check, they don't just check their bedroom. They'll be looking around the house as well. For anything that he could have put something in a drawer in the kitchen, in the living room, in the dining room, anywhere. So I'll be checking all in. So why was in the rest of the house a mess? Well, they're not just going to stick to his room because some people don't, they could hide it somewhere else. They said, I won't put it in my bedroom because my mum or my wife could find it and put it somewhere else. 
So they're going to look in the house as well. And if they didn't, then they are falling fell short there because they should have. Right? So I don't believe that the bedroom is normally a mess. Right? I understand as a teenager, I've had teenagers. Their bedrooms were never clean. Well, tidy, I should say, those clean, but never tidy, right? But I remember one year after we split up, and at the time my kids were still with the dad, with the dad, and they was at their grand one night, it's Christmas, during the Christmas, and they got, the house got broke into. And they knew straight away because my daughter's drawers were all open. You know, she don't leave them open, right? And I know for a fact the police wouldn't leave drawers open. They go in, look in a drawer, can't find nothing of anything. They shut it, they go to the next one, nothing, they shut it, right? So, and they wouldn't just do his bedroom, they do every room. Every room. And if they didn't, I'd like to know why they didn't. So, both and things like everybody was searching everything. So I have I have a question then, real quick. So yeah. you're asking that question. Is that because there's somebody's trying to insinuate that we tried to cover something up because the house was clean, or no, no, no. I, it's I mean, just. And, 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 Please understand why I'm asking that question because whether my house is dirty or clean really doesn't matter. But okay, I'm just trying to understand this. Okay, well, oh, I know where you're going with that, CP. Oh, we cleaned up the evidence. Thank you. Boom. You just dropped yourself in it then. By saying that, oh, is it? Are you trying to insinuate because our house is so clean, we've cleaned up? Uh, no, we wasn't saying that. You just said it. We weren't saying that. We just wanted to know why Sebastian's room was, except Sebastian's room, which was a mess. We just wanted to know that. But you had to go that one bit further and say, oh, I know why, because you think, because our house is clean, we've cleaned up. No, we weren't even thinking that, but thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, well, I'll explain it to you. It's okay. because I have a son that is autistic. He's 28 now, but he, but I know it's all different um, types of children on the autism uh, spectrum, but, but they like stuff in order. And so I was just wondering, um, like I was just trying to think back and I'm just wondering like um what did Seth mean by that? Like was it just because the bed was messed up? And then I know the cop like doing these cases and stuff. I know the cops. So I mean it's not like you have to get paranoid that I ask you that. It's just I was asking that because I was thinking back on things, not only personally, but because I was just trying to make sense of, and then when Katie said, well, it was just he, his room's out of order and stuff, I'm just thinking, well, you know, some kids, I, maybe they do, you know, if they're if they're autistic, you know. I don't know. I just asked that question. When I ask yeah. questions, I just, let, listen, let me just tell you this. When I ask questions, you don't have to necessarily, look, I'm not the police, okay? And you don't have to worry about how I ask questions. It's just, I also work for a retention uh, center for 11 years and it was my job to protect people and think outside the box and that's what I do it's a habit so there's right that. so me asking that question back mm -hmm. is because you've got a lot of viewers I'm not saying your viewers so let's make that super clear so that viewers don't get that construed with anything but there's so many people out there with their insinuations and because you asked that question it would not surprise me to see a comment well that's because they cleaned the house before the cops got there trust me we have seen it all heard it all 
I haven't said that, but you just said it now, and you just put it in my head. Right? All I wanted to know, like, because we know that the father has said that when he's at his house, the, bed, the bedroom's tidy. Because it's too... I find with my grandson, if he mess, stays in my room, right, and then after an hour or so, he goes into his own room, right, and I go, oh, what are you doing? Oh, you're in your own room tonight. Yeah, yeah. And then I go into my bedroom and I find out why, because he's messed it up. He's, he's knocked the covers off the bed, or sometimes he even pulls the mattress off, right? I need so heavy my mattresses, I have trouble getting my mattress back on my bed now. Right? And um, because I haven't got the strength in the one arm. And I think you, it's because you've just messed my bedroom up. You're thinking you need to get into your room, which is all nice and tidy. You know what I mean? So if you just mess his room up and you find him in another room, it's because he's messed his room up. He doesn't like it. It's, I kind of feel like he'll mess it up, but he doesn't like it messy, if you know what I mean. But he doesn't understand about tidying it up. So when I could say he'll go in with his mum, his mum will go in and tidy it up. Sometimes she does it when he's at, at school or when he's at mine on the weekends and things like that. But um, she goes in and she'll go to him sometimes, she goes, Right, I'm going to tidy you. Come on, I've got to tidy your room up. Come on, look all this on the floor. Right, you're going to step on it. It's going to get broken. Why don't you help me do it? So he'll help her tidy it up and put things where they should be. Because it's a bit like he's got all these robots. Like these uh, superhero robots sort of things. And they're all on his windowsill in his bedroom. All of them. Then he's got other toys underneath the, in the like a little bay window thing got other toys there and he keeps them all in that order he knows where everything is right he just doesn't put them back that way until his mum goes in and then he'll start putting them back that way right but he there's a reason behind his methods i find and the reason behind him going into his own room or coming into my bedroom to watch his tablet or whatever because the other room is messy all people are putting stuff out there that is completely obtuse from from the truth and it, it is ridiculous yeah That's why i asked that question yeah well you can ask me anything you want i mean i, I don't mind explaining why i asked I just don't want you to think I'm asking things in nefarious ways. I'm just simply asking. Um, I'm trying to think because I have been sitting here thinking for days and I have my own things and sometimes they have not been good. I'll just be straight up honest with you because I'm not going to be fake and try to hide anything or whatever. You said yourself, you've seen things that I said. Um, I was not too happy the other night when somebody took my question and asked you and that was a personal question when you said you, you know, and, and I didn't like how you answered it, to be frank with you. Well, I what did I say? Do you remember what it was, please? Um, it was something about, <laughs> I was pretty hurt about that myself. And um, I didn't like that because you knew it was coming, but I didn't ever expect it was coming from somebody else, you know, but they did that because they was but hurt at me anyway. But that's okay. It's okay. It's not about me fighting with anybody else. It's about Sebastian there. And, um, you know, I just didn't, I just felt some kind of type of way because it's the way you answered it and you already had it in your private, private messages. But, but none of that matters. What, what matters is Sebastian. And I want to know, tell me, Chris, can you tell me about the snake? Tell me about the snake. Why did you get rid of the snake? Or y'all got rid of, or decided together or tell me about the snake? I okay, so, right. So to, to answer your question about the snakes, we, well, I'll start at the beginning of the snakes. So. I view long time ago, I actually used to breed reptiles, snakes, gargoyle, reptile, all kinds of stuff. You name it, just about reptiles. I used to breed it. Love reptiles. One of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. uh, in California, we actually had a snake. Um, they had a bearded dragon. It died. Mm -hmm. um, but we wound up getting a snake. Well, Sebastian liked it. Mm -hmm. 
They is me and Bubba. We had a beardy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but we had a salmon team bubble. Uh, Sebastian liked the idea of having a snake. Well, oh, he loved that thing. He he's never had one. Oh, just something that popped into my head that I thought I've, I've forgotten about. You remember in that first interview they did, and then the second interview they did with someone, and you have a new class, right? They never mentioned Sebastian's name. Never. Right? It was always, he likes to do this, he likes to do that. They never mentioned it. And I said then, I said, you watch, they're going to start coming out of his name. And they did. They started using his name more. Have you noticed that? Right? And I thought, they are watching all these lives, all these videos, and they're picking, they are doing the same as what Candice and Don do. Don Wang. They watched all these lives, they watched all these videos, and they were picking up on what we were saying and then bringing it into their own. When they did a live, they were bringing that information into the live by calling him by his name, like Bubba and Sebastian, right? And if that guy calls him his son again, I'm going to smack him one, but they're calling him by his name. They watch all these lives. They watch them more. That was his snake, his own snake. Mm -hmm. um, now, mind you, when I do something, I go all in. I just, I don't half-ass do it. So, <clears throat> you know, I bought, purchased. However, I've got friends that are in the world still that are in that business, and we all chit chat. And, um, and uh, I wind up coming across basically i had like about 30 snakes at one given time mm -hmm. um all of them were oh god i'm just trying to sort something out here because something's going on with my screen i don't know what get up thank you for ball pythons mm -hmm. i didn't do have any, i didn't have anything Retick. I didn't have anything massive, poisonous, or anything like that. Well, Sebastian was infatuated with one of the snakes that one of the breeders I deal with had. And it's the picture that the snake that you see in the picture that's wrapped around his arm. That yeah. is his personal pastel ball python named Brown. That is his personal snake. He loved them. Um, the downside, like it got to the point with work, with mom's work, my work, and I told Sebastian, I said, you know, having a snake, snake means responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're going to clean it. You're going to have to feed it. You're going to water it. You're going to do all that stuff. And if he actually you don't, does. Hey, what, Katie? I said, and he did for a little while. And then he stopped? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and. Parenting is, and, and I think everybody understands this. When you're a parent, you're not your, your kid's best friends. You're not. That's not what your job is. Your job is to be a parent. And I told Sebastian, if you don't, she's gone. And he thought I was kidding. Nope. So when I got rid of one, I got rid of them all. Now, when I say got rid of them, a friend of mine, local in Nashville, he got him because he's a good breeder, great guy. So you got rid of the only thing he had that he liked, his only friend. You got rid of him because he didn't clean it or feed it. Well, I'm sorry, but all children are like that. All of them. You have a dog. Oh, I'll, I'll walk it, Mum. I walk it. I walk it every day, Mum. A week later, if uh, they don't bother, you end up taking the dog for a walk. Or you get cats. Oh, I'll clean them, Mum. Honest, honest, I'll clean them. Two days later, who's cleaning them? You are. Right? Now, I know for a fact my son has a snake. Not a big one like that one. 
but he has a snake. And a snake to me is a snake. Doesn't matter with the size of it or anything. It's like spiders. Doesn't matter how big the spider is. No, no, not having it. Right? So he's got a snake and he buys the mice, but he buys them and he they freeze them. Right? You keep them in the tub or bag or whatever in your freezer. And you don't have to feed them weekly. They can go for quite a long while, believe me, without being fed. Right? Uh, you do have to make sure they've got water. Right? And my son doesn't clean out weekly. He'll go in if there's any, like when they shed the skin. They'll go in and take the skin out and things like that. But he's not feeding them weekly. You know what I mean? So, what's, what's wrong if you didn't clean them out? And what's wrong with the parents not saying, come on then, I'll help you clean them out? You know what I mean? What is so wrong? Yes, you've been at work all day. Yes, you're tired. Right? But that's being a parent. That's what comes with the child. Right? You have to teach the child uh, responsibility. It's no use saying, look, you need to clean this snake out every week or you need to do this because they, a, a child who's autistic doesn't, they'll say yes, 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 but he doesn't understand, they don't really understand it. And uh, so you don't need to clean them out weekly, you really don't. You just need to make sure any dead skin, like the skin skins they took off, is took out, and that they've got water. And depending depending on how many miles, how big the miles are, depends on how many you give them. Well, you don't have to give them rats. You can give them mice, dead mice, which are frozen. Well, and you just leave it on the side in another container on the side to defrost it a bit. Once it's defrosted, then you can put it into the snake. Right? It doesn't take much. But you, if you're not going to work with that child to do this, then they're not going to learn to do it. They're not going to think about doing it. And if now you say, have you fed your snake today? And he'll go, no. So, well, come on then. I'll get the food out for you. We can leave it to defrost a bit, whatever. And then in an hour's time, or whatever, however long, we'll go and feed your snake together. What is the harm in that? What, as parents, is the harm in doing that with a child? Oh, no, I'm just going to get rid of all these messages on the side. But to take that snake away, and you heard the mother say he loved that snake. He loved it. But, oh, no, you take it away. Uh, he's like, if you ever want him, come get him, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, man, appreciate it. But right now, he's not he's not doing what he's supposed to do. So right now, we're not going to just hang tight with him. So we got rid of the snake. So did um, his dad not want him or you couldn't take him to his dad's or anything so he could see him when they're there? I just wondered. No, his well, dad couldn't <laughs> take him. Well, his dad was going to take 30 snakes. I mean, because you know, 30 snakes, you're talking a big old rack. Um, you are. You are like take up a lot of space. All kinds of stuff. I mean, in, you've got to deal with the food, which is going to be rats and things like that. Mice. People. Yeah. People. People don't want to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just. A I'll tell you a story once. Um, where I lived in this one house up in Scotland, right? I had my son. Was he at? I'm not sure where he's living at the time. I think he's at his girlfriend's by then. I'm not sure if he's living at ours full time or what. Anyway, we just come home from the hospital. It's the day we, my daughter gave birth to her, my first grandson, right? And she'd gone up to bed early. She'd got the baby settled down. She'd gone to bed. I'm just potting around the house, just chilling out for a bit, right? And now, at this time, we had, I think there was three snakes. Three snakes, I think there was. 
or is it two? I know we did have three at one time. Right? Anyway, I thought, right, I'm going to bed. I've started to walk up the stairs and I thought they was playing a practical joke on me by leaving a snake skin in the corner of one of the steps of the stairs. And I thought, you little wreckers, you know what I mean? So I've gone towards it when it moved. I'm not joking. I literally jumped down them stairs, screaming. My daughter's come out and says, you don't wake up, Abby. Because I'm going, I'm trying to get these words out of my mouth. I couldn't do it. I'm, the, the, the. I'm like, snake, snake, snake there. And she went, right there. And then, so she gets, I'm backing away. I am backing right away. Now, this was only a small snake, snake, right? I'm literally right by the front door by now. And she's come down the stairs, got this snake, picked it up, and she said, Mum, can you hold can you hold the door open? Can you help me get it? I said, You can bugger off, I'm not coming near that snake tank. Right? Anyway, we've got the snake back in there. Right? And uh, what it was, it managed to get out one of the vents at the top. Right? At the side of the vent, somehow. Not through the vent, but the side of the vent. So I found my son up that night. I said, Son, you're going to have to come over to me and sort this snake tank so there's one of the snakes that just got out now that could have gotten with the baby, you know what I mean? And you're like, okay, mum, okay. I said, no, no, you've got to do it, Sam. You've got to come over tomorrow. Either after work or if you're not work tomorrow, whenever. But sometime tomorrow, you've got to come over and sort these tanks out. And he did. He come over and sorted it out. And I never got out again. Oh, and I never got out again. He had the big black one. And you only had to walk up to the tank. And this snake was hiss at you. I went, Simon, you got to get me that snake. No, right. If that snake ever gets out, we're done for. No, you got to get rid of him. So we found someone else to take the snake. And this woman come along with this like pillowcase. I said, okay, where is it? I said, he's in there. So I was shaking it. Oh, I'm standing well back. She just opens this tank up, puts her hands in, grabs him, pops him in the pillowcase, twirls it around at the top, and that's it. And I'm like jaw dropping to the floor. I'm going, why did he not hiss at you? She said, what do you mean? I said, we only have to walk up to the tank to say hello to the other two snakes, and he's hissing at us. That's why we're getting rid of him, because he hisses at us. See, well, he didn't hiss at me. I said, well, if flipping while he hisses at us, he's always oh, horrible. I hated that snake. Now he's got one left. Well, right, that little one, he had died. So he's got one left now, and he's had it for quite a long time. Right? So he's only got out once, and he went missing for about two weeks. Then they found him in the bathroom behind the toilet. Right? And I went, when did you find him? I said, I was at yours today. I actually went in your bathroom. And you're telling me that snake was behind the toilet. Right? I said, yeah. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? It was, I, I do not like snakes. Don't like them question i mean i know i wouldn't it's just a question <laughs> it was a question because i wondered like you know I, I could tell in the picture he really liked it um so that was one of his you know pets and so i just wondered um i mean like, to this day i can i call him a buddy i bet they don't get me the two dogs have got there you know if sebastian wants to go i can call him up we'll head over to his snake his uh this big old snake, he's got a building full of them. And Excuse me, how are you going to do that when you're down in Memphis and you stay down there and you hardly ever see Sebastian? How are you going to do that? That's when ours are. And yeah. he's like, you want to see him? Just come on over, man, whenever you call me up. Cool. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, it, it's... It wasn't like he would never get to see it again. It was just right lessons yeah. lessons have to be taught i'm a very firm believer you know it is what it is you know is it always gone forever no not necessarily but you're going to earn it back it's not just going to be handed to you how did you discipline him with since he 
you know, how, how did you discipline? Sebastian in general? Yeah. Well, that depends. The crime, the punishment has to fit the crime, so to speak. Um, Listen to this. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Cleaning his room. Mm -hmm. And people are going to sound make me sound like i'm so horrible you i promise you folks you try this with your kids one time and you won't ever have a problem with this again i only had to shake the black bag with my kids shake it to open it they heard that black bag coming up them scared of me they moved everything off the floor and then they put everything away so bullshit pardon my friends so if you tell them to clean their room and they go in there and they clean their room. Well, they say, come out. Well, it's clean. And you go in there and you go to check the room and the room's not clean. Okay. Thought I told you to clean this room. Uh, uh, you told us the room is clean. Did you not? Well, yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm going to clean your room. And you know exactly what that means. I go in and I go grab a trash bag. I walk back in that bedroom. If it's on the floor and it's not supposed to be on the floor, it's not picked up and put in the right places, it goes in the trash bag. If it's not important enough for you to take care of and pick up, I'll take care of it for you. Go in the trash bag, tie it up. I've done this to him I've twice. One time, mom talked me out of it. The other time, Sebastian, here's the bag. Go put it in the trash can. And then you're going to take the trash can to the street. And after the after that, Sebastian, did you clean your room? Well, your mom told you to clean your room. Did you clean the room? Yes or no? Well, yes, sir. Is it clean the way it's supposed to be? Well, no, sir. Then I suggest you go back in there and clean it, or I'm coming in there in the next 10 minutes, and I'm cleaning. Yes, sir. Paul's butt to that bedroom, and by God, that room is clean the way it's supposed to be. Now, it sounds crazy, but I promise you, you try it with your kids, man, your kids are going to be like, oh, my God. They ain't kidding. I did with my kids, and like I said, I didn't have to throw anything away because they only heard me coming up the stairs with the black bags, right? Even if they, I don't think, even if I got up there and they hadn't moved it off the floor, I don't think I'd have put them in the black bags anyway. You know what I mean? I could probably put any rubbish that was on the floor in the black bags. Like sometimes I'd have a packet of crisps or an empty bottle of juice or an empty can of juice or something like that. Anything like that. Yes, that went in the trash, in the black bag. But I don't think I'd have thrown the toys in the black bag and then made them put it outside by the trash. As I said, all you've got to do, it may be 15, it may be high functioning, which means uh, I pulled up some information today, babe. I know I was going to put a little thing up, but sorry, I'm a bit too long. We can talk about it another time. Uh, it means you can do everything like daily routines, right? You can clean, you can prepare food, eat meal, certain meals and things like that. He can function a normal daily life. But there's things like every child's the same. Right? They're all the same. You've probably seen TikToks where the parents have gone, showing a, a, doing a TikTok saying, we're just visiting my daughter and they're going and they trample the towels all over the floor and they drop the coats on the floor and the bags on the floor and the shoes everywhere. You know what I mean? Enter the fridge and leave the fridge door open. That is just kids for you. Kids will do that. They do it. All kids do it. But they don't, you, and parents aren't so regimental like you are. Works, it works amazing. Do you feel like, um, like, that he was ever a burden at all on you or your relationship, either one of you? Was my stepson a burden in my marriage? 
Yeah. Oh my god, you just said steps on. Oh wow. No. 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 Um no. no. there he was. Rumor was ease. Well, I can't be sure. This is just what I've heard. And this was at the very beginning that apparently he's been talking to a neighbour and he's been saying how much uh, the problems I was having with Sebastian is taking, causing on their marriage. And that was from a neighbour. Um, the burden, so what has always been a struggle and anybody who's married and has, you know, you're a step parent, okay? That struggle of That's being struggle able to, uh, yes, yes, very much. And then you've got discipline on top of it and, you know, what, what you can do, what you can't do with, you know, cause you've got the other parent and this parent, that's always a struggle when you can get on the same page with each other mm -hmm. and, and finally everybody understands it. Right. Man, it is a beautiful, beautiful picture. Beautiful. Now, am I saying everything's sunshine and rainbows? No, it's not. Right. But it ain't high tides and tsunamis either. I don't think the father will be, ha will, will be happy, was happy when he heard you use the belt, Tommy. And the other thing I heard, please back me up someone if I'm wrong. Uh, that one of the punishments was if he, if say he threatened to leave or, or he wasn't doing so much work, one of the punishments was to put him outside the house and lock the door so he couldn't get in. I don't know who that is, but if that was the case, that might have been one of the things that happened on Sunday. Right? And if he's got cameras in the house, which I've heard about, many people talking, saying this, not just come from one person, it's come from many people. He knows what is going on in that house. He knows exactly what's going on and what Sebastian is doing and what Katie is doing. He's got control of them. If he's got cameras in that house, he's got control of what they do and everything, apart from when they go out, if they're out somewhere for the day. But then they come back and they have a two and a half hour conversation telling you all about what they've, where they've been, what they did, what they brought, what they ate. Because you're the control freak, you need that control. And you're loving these lives because you just spent like the first 30 minutes not talking about Sebastian. Not talking about. We'd like to know uh, what is like. Uh, you say he he had his moments. He had good times. He had bad days. Autistic children are like that. We know that. But where did he like to go? You know what I mean? Did he like to go to places where there was animals? Because you said he loves cats, right? But he doesn't own a cat. You know, you went out, got rid of a snake, and then you've got two little puppies. Why not get him a cat? Why not get a cat? Oh, because that means you probably give that away as well because he wouldn't clean the litter tray. Hmm. So, in a way, it's a good job you didn't get a cat, isn't it? Because you could probably find it another home. I wonder how long you'll keep the dogs for. So it just makes me wonder what goes up, what was going on in that household. I'm not going to do any more of this video because I'll just finish this last little bit off. So if you and his mom ever argued, and that's in every marriage, like would Sebastian ever jump between y'all? Like physically? Yeah. No. <laughs> we don't fight and yell and scream or any of that like violent type stuff. We tend to take it behind closed door in our, 
our bedroom and have a conversation because the children should never be exposed to that. That's between us, not them. No, you don't fight and argue because, Katie, you're too scared to. He's so controlling, he's got you where he wants you. Right? So if he says jump, you flipping jump. Right? And I'm sorry because you're the mother and you're there 24 7. You should be the one saying what goes on in that house, not he. You. You should be the one disciplining your your child, not he. And first off, like this, I'm going to make this real clear, crystal clear. I was always raised, you never strike a woman. Yeah. And but I have taught that to Sebastian. You will never strike a woman. Mm -hmm period and i'm not accusing you of so but again uh, um seth has said that katie and again i'm sorry katie that um that again there was a time and this is a long people can change but right. again it's been said that katie has struck Seth, and that again that's a long time i wasn't there so oh, no um and i wasn't there either for the record so, yeah, so, so maybe katie should answer this I don't know. yeah <laughs> no. this. what's so fucking funny about that chris i know smiley laughing because you're laughing you know what i mean but what's so flipping funny about that I wasn't there. Ha, 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 ha. I don't give two hoots if you was there or not. It's not funny. That, oh Lord, no. That, um, that is a whole nother thing that happened back then. Yeah. Well, well, that's what brought me to my question. So I was just wondering if, you know, Sebastian stepped in. And then I had heard uh, at another place where Seth had said Sebastian would step in. And I didn't even know if he was talking about that or not, because I heard about that separate, that Sebastian would step in and say, you know, don't do this to my dad or whatever. And he could be talking about something totally different. But, you know, again, I have to think and think all kinds of things in my head. So did he, did, did Sebastian have tantrums at all? Yeah. And this is oh, yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, yeah. He's, he's, he's a kid. I mean, it, it's even when I came in the picture, I mean, his tantrums were pretty bad. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, to the point, I mean, he, so I'm not, I'm not dragging Seth, my husband, mom, his sister, my wife. I'm not dragging people through the mud. So what is in the past is die. And I'm saying that for everybody to hear, to include all parties involved with this situation. Right. Right. Past is a right. Past right. needs to die. Let right. it be. Right. Um, right. Past is a past, right? Are you hearing yourself talk, Chris? Are you hearing what you're saying? The past is the past, right? But you just spent 30 minutes at the beginning of this live talking about JLR and that he had a past, right? Uh, uh, he'd been in prison or whatever. That is the past. What happened with JLR is in the past. But, oh, but you can't let that go. But anything to do with you or Katie, oh, that was in the past. You're a hypocrite. That's the word I wanted. You see, oh, God, I can't watch this no more. It's doing my head in. So I'm going to stop this thing because that is just so hypocritical. He sat there for half an hour talking about JLR and whatever and how he's got a, some past 
Yeah, it is past. It's now Joe Pike's shoes and he's come out and he's made himself a better man. But as soon as we talk about you or Katie, oh, that was in the past. We want us to forget that. But you won't forget JLR's past. Oh, he just gets me so mad. One morning, I'm going to wake up and there isn't going to be no more lives. Oh, no more lives with them two. Right? Because they don't talk about Sebastian this bit. They waste more time on themselves. And I think some of the questions, we don't need to know half the stuff. We don't. Right? What the questions are being asked, so they're answering them. Fair enough. But it's, it's like he took the snake away from me because he didn't clean it or feed it. He, he wasn't being responsible. And then, just then, when she said uh, something, uh, Smiley said to me, he said, I was just a kid. Yes, he's a child, he's a kid. So how do you expect a kid to understand the responsibilities of uh, looking after a snake, right? If you don't work with him. I was so hypocritical. Has he heard himself on these lives? Does he ever go back and watch these lives? Because he wonders why we pick up, why we talk about it and why we say this and why we say because it's so fucking annoying. So flipping annoying. I really got I don't know if I want to watch any more lives with it there. <laughs> really right, I don't I just want to concentrate on Sebastian. I want to concentrate on this life. Hold on. This life here. Then I can get his picture up again. Where is it? Where is it? That one. This life. That's what we're all here for. We're not here for the stepfather or the mother. <coughs> we're here for him. If I'm here for anyone, it's for Seth. Because I want to get the word out for anyone in the US in the US who can help. Who is here in this video. If you can help, the link will be in my description for the Facebook page. You have to join it, then you can message them, put a message on there. And that is the Facebook page where most messages will get back to Seth. Right? So join that page and leave a message if you can help him arrange for a meetup somewhere, wherever they're going to be. Just arrange it. Because this is the lag we're looking for. This lag. I haven't got his other photo with me to one of the folders. Right? But this is the lag. A 15-year-old autistic lag. He hasn't got the... Um, no, uh, he could be 15, but he's probably got the age of a like, uh, say, 11, 12 year old. So his brain isn't that fully formed yet for his age. So how do you expect an 11 or 12 year old to understand to keep a snake clean? They've said it themselves. He hasn't got the full, he hasn't got the brain capacity for his age, sort of thing. It's two or three years below his age, in his, his way of thinking. So he's like 11, 12 in age, in the way he thinks. What 11, 12 year old will understand that you've got to go and clean the cage out and put food in and well, defrost the food and then go and feed the snake and whatever. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. A 15 year old, a, a proper 15, a 15 year old who as the age capacity of a 15 year old would understand that. But he hasn't got that age capacity of a 15 year old. He hasn't. And the way he treats him, like getting him to clean his room. Why don't you just say, have you cleaned your room? Well, yeah, have you cleaned it the way it should be? 
Well, no. Well, come on then, let's do it together. Let, I'll come up with you. Two hands, two pairs of hands are better than one. You get it done in no time. Right? And what child doesn't have toys all over the floor? I, I remember once, it was at my son's, my brother's house. I was staying at theirs because the wife, his wife was pregnant. And they had two children already. So I was staying there so that when she went into hospital to have her third, right, I was there to look after her little ones. And one day, the health visitor was coming. And Mark went to the door and said, oh my God, it's the health visitor. Get them toys picked up, pick them toys up, do this, do that. And he's opened the door and the health visitor said, leave those toys where they are. This is the first home I have come into where it looks like children leave. Because every home she'd been in, all the toys were all put away, all the houses were nice and clean, cushions all puffed up lovely. Right? So she so leave them toys where they are. I haven't come here for the toys. I've come here to see the baby. And my brother was gobsmacked by that. Gobsmacked. So and people say to me, oh, excuse the mess. I'm not here about the mess. I'm here to see you. You know what I mean? I don't care about how messy your house is. And I don't care about how clean their house was or messy. But I just had this feeling that because it's the gag said, except, except Sebastian's room, I had this feeling that perhaps he'd had some sort of mount down and it trashed his bedroom. Right? What's that cat doing up there? Hold on. She's got to move my cat. Up there now. Move. Move. So, but he's the one who said, oh, I know what everyone's thinking because my they think my house is so clean, we've covered up, we've cleaned up. No, I wasn't. But thank you. You just said it, not me. And I don't think, I don't think any other YouTubers have said that either. They just wanted to know why Sebastian's room was a mess and not the rest of the house. That's all I wanted to know. Right? My mum's house was always tidy. Downstairs, when she walked upstairs, the bedrooms were trashed. When we were kids. Right? And that's because we either hadn't put our washing away or we'd come in from school and just dropped, got changed and left our school uniform on the floor. Our bags were on the floor. Our shoes were on the floor. You name it. This is having children. So if you can't work with a child who's autistic and work alongside him and help him clean the snake house, but give him the majority of the work to do, but you're just there helping him, sort of thing, and then eventually he'll get to do it himself on his own because it will become part of his routine, right? Part of his routine would be, say, Every Friday or every Saturday, well, not Saturday, because he has it, he's at his dad. Say every Monday, right? Because he's normally back home by the Monday. So say once a week on a Monday, every Monday, you clean your snake house, right? If you did that with him as a parent, right, it would become so routine for him, he would automatically do it himself. After a while, it takes a long time, not just a week or so or two weeks, it takes a long time. But you work with a child with autism doing this, they will become part of their routine. It obviously wasn't part of his routine because he hadn't been, work, they hadn't worked with him. Right? When you introduce anything new to a child with autism, you've got to work with them. So it becomes part of their routine. Like my grandson, who I have once a fortnight, he comes to my mum on a Friday and goes home on a Sunday, right? And the following weekend, his other grand has him, but she just has him, because of her work, 
she she has man the sagging arts to the Sunday. Right? He knows that. He knows that. That's his routine. He knows exactly where he's going, what day he's going. Because that's routine. And cleaning his snake would have been would it could become his routine if they had worked with him. But oh no. They expected him to know straight away that you've got to clean him, you've got to feed him, you've got to do these. You've got to work with a child with autism. You do. Right? And then you could have something where he loves. He loves numbers. Oh, I find a lot of children with autism are good with numbers. Right? Really, really good with numbers. And so you give them something like they like to do. Oh, yeah, they'll do that. Well, I've had my grandson here, and he's had worksheets sent home from school. Right? Now, they don't expect him to do all those worksheets. It might be three or four sheets. They don't expect him to do it all. Right? So I sat with him one Saturday at my table, and I said, yeah, here's your pencil. Now, I showed him how to do it first, what he had to do, right? I did two or three of them. Then he went and did the rest, right? And you know what he did? The last letter was W, right? W. And what he was doing, you know how they say you learn to write joined up? That's what he's doing with the W. He's doing the W. Then instead of stopping at the top, he'd go along with the pencil to the next W. Like that, and he's doing joined up. And I thought, flipping out. Six years old, I wasn't writing like that at six years old. But bearing in mind, he's a year behind. He, he's got the brain capacity of a five year old. Right? He's always had that since for years now. They said he's working with the brain capacity of a five year old, so he's like, a year behind that like he should be so it it's hard it's hard working with children with autism you've got to have patience you've got to have understanding and you've got to understand when i say understanding you've got to see it from their way look at some from their point of view both of my grandson they go on at me they're going on about for me and if they're telling a story in the play, I join in with that play, play scene. Like my one grandson, he loves rockets and robots. And he'll go, strapping, grand, we're going to the moon. So I literally make myself look like I'm strapping myself in. And then he, he can stay. And then he goes, boom. And he's shaking and I'm shaking. But that's how I, we interact. And he loves that. And then you'll, I'll say something to him, and I'll go, Grad, we're only joke, we're only messing about here. We're only playing. I said, I oh, know. He thinks I'm taking it serious, but I'm not, I'm playing with him. But he thinks then because I'm joining in with him, I'm taking it seriously. And I'm not. But we have so much fun doing that. So much fun. So, working with an autist. Having an autistic child can be hard, but can also be hard and very challenging, but also very fun. If you, if you see it from their way, it's a lot easier. Don't expect them to do something your way, because it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Right? Because they see life differently to us. And every autistic child is different from each other. You never want, no, there's not one the same. But then again, it's like us, there's I and me, there's never another one like me. There never will be. And it's like you, you are yourself, there's never going to be another one like you. Right? So, anyway, it is getting on for 10 past 11 here. It actually went on longer than I was planning. I was hoping to look through that uh, work on the autism, but 
I can do that in every life. I am back tomorrow afternoon, if anyone wants to join me. But I'm talking tomorrow, I'm discovering Ruby Frank and Jodie Hildebrand. Because today, was it 20, today, yesterday or today, all this information has been released. There's loads of videos about the arrest, about Jodie's home, going around and doing the search, uh, the interview at the police station with the father. So much. So I'm going to talk for them all and find the best ones to talk about. The one with the father is, oof, he don't know why he's there. And then when they actually tell him, it's like, what? You know what I mean? It's like, no, no, I love my wife will not do that, sort of thing. He's in a bit of a like denial, but I can understand that. But it's like, you've got to see that interview. If you haven't already seen it, I'll be showing it tomorrow, that one. But that's in the afternoon one. I don't know if I'll be back on tomorrow night, but I will be on tomorrow afternoon. Maybe just for an hour or so tomorrow afternoon. So, everyone from Twitter, thank you for being here with me tonight. Thank you for those from, on YouTube for being here with me tonight. And um, I probably won't get to bed till about two o'clock in the morning again. I'll see what time. I'll see what there is going through the YouTube, what they call the YouTube streets. But, um, you know, I love, I like that interview by Smiley. Okay. But he won't do an interview with a man. You heard the other night how he was when Josh come up on. Was it Smiley? Was it Smiley's he come up on? Yeah, it was. And you come up on Smiley, that video that we was watching. And when Josh called him out, you see, as soon as he come back up on the stage, the father, and knew that Josh was there, it was like, okay. And his whole attitude changed. Whole attitude changed because he knew he's going up against the man. He thinks the women are pushovers. Try me, mate. But to be honest with you, don't, don't, I don't want you on my show. I, I wouldn't want you on my show. I really would do. Because I could not sit there and listen to that BS on my show. And I think at the moment, everything he says is BS. Because it's not about Sebastian, it's all about himself. And I don't like that. I'm here for that lad, and that is it. I want this lad found. I want him found alive and brought home and back to his father, who I wish had took control of him last year. Right? But I think it was something to do. I think the more had something in that as well. Like that. All right, let him start. Leave it for this year. We'll work on his behaviour. We'll work on his... You know what I mean? Well, I wish the father had gone, no, no, let him come to my, we'll have him now, I'll have him now. And I wish he'd gone to his father's last year. Yeah, he does, yeah. Yeah, I agree. He thinks women are second class citizens and should be seen and not heard. It's a disgusting excuse of a man. And who's that, Gillian? Hi there, Gillian. Nice to see you. Yeah, I agree. He is. I hate people like that. And as I said, even if I had a big following, oh, and they got in touch with me to come on my show, I'd say no, because uh, you're not showing to me anything that you're being out there, boots on the ground, looking for your son and he was getting me so mad 
during that live when you kept saying, my son, my son, is not your son. And then finally he said, stepson. Wow, he finally said it, stepson. It's so, it's just vile. And he's controlling and I think he's, I think he's just got to that place now with Katie where she's just giving in on him. Yeah, okay, I'll do whatever. Anything for a quiet life. You, you, I'll let you discipline my child. No. No. Stand up to him. Be the woman you was. Right? So. But it's just too hypocritical as well. He really is. And if I was to go through all them lives again, which are quite a few, right? I could find some more points where he's being hypocritical. So it's, I don't understand people like him. I really don't. Because what did I get out of him? He's on his fifth marriage. I can't see it lasting. I really can't. No, Jillian, they haven't. They haven't won search for Sebastian. Four three judges, yeah. And apparently the one they didn't go to was for security reasons. Because apparently they've been death threats. Yeah. Um, in a way, I can understand why they went to the uh, motorbike meet and ride thing because you get a lot of bikers. And these bikers go all over the US, right? And they, a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, are there for the, are for the children, right? But it's like when I hear Seth laugh, I love it when he laughs because you know he's had such a hard day because he's been out there looking for his son. So for him to laugh just once a day, makes my heart gets my heart going again you know what i mean because he's broken he's out there every day searching he comes home and he dropped down to a jumped down to a lot the other night as i said with josh exactly exactly why didn't they just call police or why didn't they take why didn't they get hold of their biker friends? They would have gone a security for them. You know what I mean? But come on. That's just pathetic. And then there's one they didn't go to because it was up in Clarksville. And they said, oh, that was more for the father's side of the family. No, it was for Sebastian, your son. Right? And then they say they didn't know anything about that um, Nancy Grace. Right, interview. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Because JLR even said on his live last night that he spoke to someone from that Nancy Grace, right? And they said, no, we did get in touch with them. Because they wanted just the bio parents, that was the mother and the, and the father. They didn't want uh, Chris there. Right? They reached out to the mother. Yeah? She never got back in touch with them. And yet she said she reached out to them and they never got back in touch with them. I'm sorry, love. I believe Nancy Grace and her team over you. So, and then they sit there and they say, we need to work together to, to find Sebastian. Uh, you just gave that opportunity up with Nancy Grace to go on alive with just you and Seth and Nancy. Right? But you wouldn't be prepared, prepared, be prepared to go on alive without your little sidekick, the one who's telling you what to say and what to do. You know what I mean?
No, he wouldn't have. And I'll tell you now, I'll be surprised if Nancy has um, either of them on the show. I'll be surprised if she had them on the show. Because Nancy wouldn't stand for that BS actually coming out of his mouth. She really wouldn't. And so for them to say, oh, but they didn't get back to us, that is BS. They did get back to you. They reached out to you. You didn't get in touch with them because they only wanted the mother they didn't want to know. And as I said, it might as well be Don Wells and Candice. He did all the talking. He wasn't even there when Summer Moon, well, Summer Wells went missing. He was at work, apparently. So why would he be doing all the talking? And this is the same thing. He was in Memphis, apparently. So why is he doing all the talking? It doesn't make sense. He said he's protecting her because of what's gone on in the past. I don't care about what's gone on in the past. You wasn't there. She was. And like, I, I think as well, someone said it in the chat, uh, someone said it, when they're doing that live, every so often they go quiet. And we think they put themselves on mute. So they was talk so they could uh, talk to each other or something like that. Um, yeah, he wasn't there. But like I said, if he had cameras in that house, which I've heard, I don't know who it is, I've heard that. Then that is another way of controlling what happens in that house. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it's like that thing with the phone call. He said, she was, she was lying on the sofa and she, she was falling asleep. And I told her to wake up, get up, and go and sort the dogs out and go to bed. It was very telling. But then again, it's the same in all the interviews they do. I can guarantee you, he does another interview, it'll be it'll be running someone else off. He won't be talking about Sebastian, he'll be going on about another YouTuber. Might even be going on about me because I don't I don't like the guy. But my channel isn't big enough anyway for him. And I wouldn't have him on my channel anyway. I really wouldn't. Even if I said, even if I say, people say, oh, I'll have him on your channel, I'll, so I'll subscribe, I'll subscribe. No, no, not happening. Not happening. I would have Seth on my program, on my live, but I wouldn't have them to. Because I'm full of BS. She's too scared to say what she wants to say. And when you see her live, on live interviews, right, you look at her face, she is breaking. Someone said they expected him to break first. No, he's not going to break. She's going to break. She knows something and she's not saying. He does slip up. As I said, I pointed out what one or two that I've seen, which were a bit hypocritical of him. Right? Bring anything up about their past, and it's the past. That's in the past. But someone else, oh no, they bring their past up. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, that just, it's just vile. And for her to back him up like she does. Like when he says, I can't even imagine what Riley Pence are going. What do you mean? Imagine. According to you, you also have a missing child. Oh, so what, what do you need to? Exactly. Why would you need to imagine? He, would, he should have said, I know exactly what his parents are going through. Because we are going through the same. Not, like, if it was me, I would say, or oh, I couldn't imagine what the parents are going through. Because I couldn't. 
because I'm not going through that. So I can't imagine. But he's going through that. So why can't it? Why use that word? It doesn't make sense. And then he says, oh, but you pick everything, every little word that we say, and then you make some else out of it. No, it's because when you talk, you're talking a load of BS. It doesn't make sense. But you love this, CP. You love this because it's all about you. You're narcissistic. I can't even say the other words I want to say. This, the air would be fecking blue. Right? Flipping blue, the air would be. You can't, I can't say what I want to say. It's just a narcissistic, horrible, royal man. And when you said that thing about they don't pay for my bills, they don't live, they don't pay for my bills, they don't feed me, they don't sleep with me. I went, no, thank you. Get that thought out of my head straight away. No. You know what I mean? And he was clapping at the beginning. It's so, like, you know, when you're trying to make a point and you clap, oh, and this and that and whatever. It, that's what he was doing. I'm not brass, but I mean, I can be brass, but I can be truthful. I will show respect. That's what he was doing. And that's what the clapping was. And then no, the, the word back to him, he wasn't clapping. Are you in the same room? Or are you at home and he's at work? What What's going on? So how would she, if she's at home, right, and he's at work, is she with him at his work in the mobile home? Or is she at home in the house and he's at work? And if he's at work, how can she know whether he's clapping or not? And if she's going in his work in the mobile home, why? Why should you, why are you not at home? Your son could, your son could come home one day and you won't be there. But yeah, that got me, the punishment fitting the crime. He punished Sebastian by hitting him with a bow and taking everything he looked to write. Exactly, exactly. It's just so sad. And I don't know what happened to somebody. But you know when she said she heard the noise about 10 o'clock and she said, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you should be asleep. Right? And then someone said, why well, didn't you go and check on him? Well, it's just, well, it's 15. I don't like to do that now. But you go in his room because he hasn't cleaned up. Oh, then you go in his room. How hypocritical is that? One, you say one thing, but then say another. It doesn't match up. The numbers aren't adding up. It doesn't, no. Two and two does not make five. So, it's, I, I just feel sad. What was this lad going through? And I hope and pray that the grandmother just be, I can't understand why the TBI haven't spoken to her. They might have done by now. I hope they have because they need to. TBR, if you're listening to this, some some your police department, if you're listening to this, please get in touch with the grandmother. You have apparently she hasn't spoken to any of you lot. You need to speak to her. I'd love to know what she's going to say. Oh, that could be interesting because, well, I personally think she was angry, he wouldn't go to sleep and went into the room and made him bag all his toys up 
pool and so on. So go outside and put them in the bin. That's why you had to, you know, shoes on. Have you ever thought about adding on to that and then lock the door so you couldn't get in? Yeah, she then locked him inside outside. And Sebastian either paced outside or tried to walk to his dad's. Possibly. Because if he was leaving, if he left on his own free will, I've said it before, he would go, A, had his phone. B, got the money that was saved up in his bedroom, which they found. In a made up uh, cash machine that he made. Deposit like where you draw your money out, cash machine. He made one of them, so he put money in there so he could take it out, something. He would have took his money with him, which would make taking a wallet. He would have took his phone, his money, his wallet, his flashlight, yeah, don't forget his flashlight, and then he would have come downstairs, put shoes on and a coat on, and left. But he didn't do any other then. And I think you're right. She did do something with his toys or something. Because if she's on the phone to the dad, the stepfather at the time, she he's probably told her. If he's messing about and playing with his toys, take the toys up and back it up and get him to take it out to the bin. And then lock the door. And he's probably the one who said, lock the door. But it's you know, almost got him on camera taking the bins out, I don't think. If they have it was earlier on in the evening, if they've got him on camera. But it's just the fact that the father says those two torch lights as well are not anything to do with his house or any common ground by his house. Uh, the neighbour knows where his camera was pointing. The police know because the neighbour told him Right, so don't sit there and try and pop us off. As I said, he must think we're fucking thick. He must think that we believe it's aliens that come down. And just so happened to land on that common land at the back of his house. Right? If he pays straight, I'll go and just go in the three hour call to Chris. He left his phone to look like it was a call when in reality he drove home to collect up Sebastian. You know what? I was reading, I read something on a Facebook page, if I remember who it was now, and they got all the links to all the interviews. And then one thing is that he wrote his opinion. And he said he believes something happened on a Sunday, right? And then at 12 o'clock when they come off the phone, he drove up from Memphis to their home. It takes about three and a half hours, but at that time of night, morning, it'd be very quiet, so he could do it a bit quicker. So he could easily got there for about 3.15, 3.10, 3.15. Right? Parked his car up by that construction site entrance, yeah? And then... The mother could have maybe even come out carrying Sebastian, right? Because something like that happened. She's carrying him over to whoever because we don't see this because the video is cut off. But they said after those two walk off, a short while after, subject number two comes back on screen heading back towards the house. So I think it was a handover. Right? Or she walked, or if they did follow his scent, right? He's walked, she's took him out of the house. Or his stepdad got hold of him and said, look, I'm coming back. Come down and meet me outside. I'll be in the back area. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I totally agree. That is, and he could have got back down Memphis 
by 6.30 easily. I don't know what time he starts work. I don't know what time they start work. Apparently when she phoned about quarter past six, he was at work. So does he start at six? I don't know. I've never, I've never known construction site workers up in the UK start that early. Never. <laughs> they like to start about seven-ish, have a break about nine, go back about 11, have another break about one, go back about two and three, and then finish at three, four. But they said there's no house lights, right? But in that video, it shows some house lights on the corner. Right? And someone said, well, I said, whose house lights are those? And someone messaged me and said, this, these are the house lights on the corner of their house, at the back of their house. But whenever they talk about it on TV, they don't mention them house lights. They say there's no house lights. That come on. But I can see two a house light that is on. Right? And I can see subject one and subject two. And subject two is walking towards subject one. Then they both go off the screen. Then shortly after that the video stops. But apparently then subject two comes back onto the screen, heading towards the house. That's why I think it was either at Handover, right, where she carried him out of the house and handed him over to the father, the stepfather. Because we don't really know where that dog hit, hit on the scent. And they did say it was a, pulse, a false positive. Yeah, I think the father is suspecting something now. Because He's uh, he, I I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't get dragged into all this crap like that. Bringing out me, he wants to stay away from all that. He wants to carry on doing what he's doing and just concentrate on getting Sebastian's game out there and Sebastian's picture out there. Don't fall fall in line with their BS, right? The grandmother wants to call him out. Let the grandmother call him out. Because there'll be no messing with she calls them out. So it's. But well, something definitely happened on Sunday. I don't care what they say, something happened on that Sunday. And I don't believe the police trust his bedroom. They wouldn't do that. As I said earlier, when they search a house, they don't just search the child's bedroom. They're looking all the cupboards and drawers in case there's anything in there that could tell them. Where, what's happened, where he's gone. You know what I mean? Like where he played with his toys downstairs. Perhaps there's another room he played in. Right? Could have been in there. But none of that house was messed up. So I can't believe the police would mess up a child's bedroom. Plus they take photos of it first. So... It doesn't make sense. There's that puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, and there's a piece fucking missing. So, anyway, I'm going to have to go because it is you now 20 to 12. Oh my God, I need to sleep. I'm going to have to just download this afterwards and then upload this onto YouTube. It takes about half an hour all in all. But then I'm going to have to get some sleep. But thank you, Gillian, for joining in the chat. I hope you join us again and come in the chat. And anyone else on Twitter, if you'd like to come and join us over on YouTube, my link is on Twitter. It's there. Come and join us and come and join in with the chat. I personally think she's angry. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I... I think something happened Sunday night, and I think he went. He was told to go out the house. He was either put out the house for his behaviour, or he was enticed out the house by getting his toys took out again 
and throwing away life. The poor lad didn't have nothing left. He wouldn't have nothing left in his bedroom, would he? That lad wasn't happy. Probably was when the father, stepfather wasn't there during the week, you know what I mean? And when he was at his dad's, he was fine. But I still think they had house cameras inside. And until someone tells me different, that's what I'm going to think is my opinion. And I've got every right to my opinion. And if I don't want CP or KP on my show, I don't need to have them on my show. If I want to listen to, if I want people who are going to give me BS, then they can BS off my show because I don't want them on here. I want people who care about Sebastian, who want him to be found. And that is it. Anyway, I'm going to leave you because I'm getting a bit hoarse. My throat's getting a bit dry. And I need to get some sleep. So thank you again, Gillian, MG, and all you lot on Twitter following and watching this. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you for me listening to my me rambling on. And I will see you all tomorrow. Right, when I can get my ending up. Yeah, I'm on again tomorrow afternoon doing one about Ruby Franklin and what's her name? Jodie Hildebrand. Right, that, that's interesting. You want to see these videos coming out? Yes. Right? And I've been following that case from day one. From the first day it came up on the news. Anyway, so I'm going to say good night. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Sebastian definitely wasn't happy. That also explains his regression. Yes, autistic children regress when they suffer trauma as they cannot communicate. Exactly. Uh, you know what I mean? It's it's a sign of trauma. It's uh, anxiety. You know what I mean? He was scared of the stepfather, and his, I think he was scared of, scared of his mother because the mother was being told by the stepfather how to punish him when he wasn't there. Right. But thank you again, Gillian, MG, and all everyone else. Thank you for being here tonight, and I'm definitely leaving this time. So good night, everyone. See you tomorrow.